All right, there we go. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Art in the Morning. I'm Dee Dee, and this was an impromptu morning, Friday morning show. I was doing some uh, camera testing and stuff with Carrie, and people got notification that I was streaming, so now we're going to stream. So we'll do that for a while. But I, I was answering some questions. So let me backtrack a few. One person, Terry, asked me about how I glue magazines together to make a magazine journal. Because you know I put two or three magazines together. And if y'all haven't seen the magazine journal shows, I have a couple of recordings of those. But all I do is I'll take, and I'm just going to use this calendar. I'm not going to actually glue. I'm just going to show you what I do. I use my Eileen's Tacky. And on the back, the back of the magazine, which is usually a card stock, you know, for the ones I use, I'll completely cover it with Eileen's Tacky, and I smear it out. I don't leave any lumpy bumpies. And then I do it on the, I do the same thing on the part that's going to get glued to it. So in other words, like if I'm gluing this to this, I completely cover it with Eileen's Tacky, both pages, smear it out, and then glue them together. And that holds it, holds it. So that's what I do for gluing the magazine journal pages together. Hello from Finland. Um, I have I've done a whole bunch of uh, flip through my color books and a whole all my color books. I've shown those. There's already videos on those. And I just did color book update. I think it was either Monday or Wednesday. Showing all the ones that I'm in process doing. The ones that I have partial pages done. I'm still waiting for Angie Bell to answer me. Because <laughs> I don't know which color book she was asking about. Oh, one of them was the... Oh, okay. Yeah, the ones that you sent me. All those, Angie, I gave them all away. They were all given away. So Angie was asking me about some of the color books that she had sent me. Yeah, I gave all those away. Um, let's see. Oh, and Miss Martha was asking my pencil storage. All right, so let me, I will talk about that. We like talking about pencil storage, don't we? <laughs> okay. Yes, I did. I gave them all away, Angie. Y'all send me, if I have, if y'all send me stuff and it's like, you know, I have a lot of it, it gets sent away. I share. I, I do share. All right. Yes, I know. Well, actually, the old ones are the better ones, Miss Martha. If you have barrel Prisma colors, yay you! <laughs> when they, what, yeah, when, what do you do when you get annoyed? Are you asking Miss Martha? Miss Martha goes, my Prisma pen pencils are old, and I get annoyed when they break. What do you do in that instance? So when I get annoyed, Martha, I usually stop and get me a cup. Of <laughs> okay, so there are people, different ones have talked about putting them in a low temp in your oven and heating up the core. Some have even tried to said microwaves, although Dana said hers caught on fire. So, yeah, I would not recommend putting your pencils in the microwave. Maybe a low, like, you know, 200 or 150 or something in your... I'm not recommending any of that because I've not tried any of that. I've not tried to heat up any of my Prisma colors. What I usually do is I just suck it up and sharpen them again. <laughs> ah, Miss Martha. Ah, ah. Um, the tacky glue is thicker, Crocker too. My when I matte medium. Let me show you the difference. Good question. All right, let me get a little bit of test here okay I use golden matte medium I just put it in a uh, dishwasher bottle to use but it's it's golden matte medium here's my Eileen's tacky glue which I love that they come now in these little uh although I still get a build up there because I'm not careful but uh, yeah it's got the little tip that you can put your the tip in it stands up because before that I put them in the jars but I'd always keep my I'd always keep them face down. All right, so you've had to let color come loose from the pencil. Yeah, I know. There are problems with Prismacolor. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me, I know that. Yes, we love it. Oh, and, and Barb, if you want to put in for uh, Tar, you ta I, I can't even pronounce the Finnish girl's name. I'm going to have to rename her. Jana. Yeah, we'll have to name it because we're not into the sense of chat. 
<laughs> or Yana from Finland. I don't know. I can't do a Finnish accent. Anyway, but Barb, if you want to put your link in there for her to watch you at 2, feel free. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Eileen. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so let me, um, so th the tacky glue where Crocker 2 was asking, I'm going to squeeze out some a blob of tacky glue. I'm going to show you the difference. Okay, now you can get gel, matte gel is thick, right? But the matte medium, let me just show you the difference here. All right, finger test. <laughs> and then Miss Martha, I'm going to do the pencil thing. All right, so the reason you want to use the tacky glue or some kind of, even probably Elmer's School glue, if you, as long as you smooth it out and put a coat on both sides. Coat this and coat this, smooth it out so you don't have lumpy bumpies, and then glue both sides together. I always put glue on both sides of everything, whether I'm using matte medium to glue collage bits or tacky glue to use like gluing magazines together. Tara. Okay, Tara. Let me write that down. Tara from Finland. Good to have you. Thanks for being here. Okay, so look at the tacky glue. Let me kind of tilt it a little bit. Else. All right, look, let's do the finger test. Look at that. See how thick that is? It's very thick and sticky. Very thick. Very thick. It's tacky, tacky, tacky. <laughs> That's why it's called my wings. So that's the tacky glue. See how thick it is? Okay. Now the matte medium is almost like liquid. It's like it's like um like hand lotion. It's like hand lotion consistency. See how thin that is and smooth? Loving me some matte medium. <laughs> but the tacky glue is real thick and sticky. So this is just thicker and better to use for the magazine. Uh, journals like gluing covers together or anything like that all right now let me get a baby wipe and clean my fingers off and then I'll show some pencil storage we love talking about pencil storage <laughs> Miss Martha all right and some of y'all probably seen it you know how I store pencils and stuff before but I'm gonna I'll show you I have different things for different pencils all right so and of course if I go somewhere I'll use different things to carry depending on how long I'm going to be gone. If I'm going to go somewhere for a week, which is like maybe once every, literally a blue moon, <laughs> I, you know, if I go on a vacation or something, even, well, let's put it this way. If I was going on vacation, I'd take a, a travel kit. If I was going to Denise's like for a week or two, which that just doesn't really ever happen anymore. It used to happen more when the kids were smaller. But then I would take my big tote of pencils. So it depends on where I'm going, what I'm doing as far as carrying anything with me. So if y'all are watching the recording, someone asked me, Miss Martha asked me about, let's, let's, let's just give Miss Martha a short shout out real quick. She doesn't get here very often. So Martha is seeking for Art Martha. And this, I have one of her lovely pieces of art that I'm getting ready to show off. I mean, I have some of her cards. Now all her if, if y'all remember, like before Christmas, she sent us some prints and, and some real nice framed, matted, not framed, but matted prints. And I gave all those away. So I don't have any of Miss Martha's art left because I gave it all away. However, this is mine. I will never give this one away. This is one Miss Martha's Frida Spoons. And I know it's probably, I'm going to have to kind of do a little, little lovey on it here. So it's a silver spoon painted. She wire wraps, beaded, she beads it, she puts metal bits. There's a little scully right there. Oh, that's a skelly, not a scully. The whole that's got the full skeleton. She's got a little skelly there. It's got a beaded hanger, different pieces of metallic, like probably alcohol, you know, paint. I mean alcohol inks that will stick to metal. This is all wire wrapped beads, but the, the gem of it is the painting she paints the most awesome Frida's ever Miss Martha can whip out some Frida's I'll tell ya <laughs> and so she's got a metal bit glued to the let me, oops sorry guys let me get her untangled here she has a metal bit attached to the back of the spoon sorry guys I bumped it with the spoon 
I know. I love this spoon, too. It hangs on my wall next to my barb house. I have a barb house I showed the other day. And uh, so she put a little jeweled heart here. But this is all this is all Miss Martha's painting. And she paints these not just on spoons, but, I mean, she paints them on, you know, canvases and, and other things, too. Hang on, guys. I froze with incoming mail. One second. There we go. So Miss Martha is an awesome artist. So there you can see that. And then she has all kinds of beads and charms. She has a little dove hanging off of it. So you can see it's got all kinds of things hanging off of it. And I especially love it. I got to go to the Frida exhibit at the High Museum here in Atlanta a few years ago. And I'm hoping if we can coordinate it. We wanted to go last weekend to the High Museum to see John... Mikel Basqua, <laughs> and I know guys, I'm pronouncing it totally wrong, but anyway, he's got an exhibit of his art journals and things at the museum through May, so I'm hoping if we can coordinate it with Denise, I want to take Cam uh, to the museum, and so I'm kind of, I put it off a week, and I might put it off another week if he can't go tomorrow, but I'd like for us to coordinate so that we can get him down there. Uh, with his friend that I, I would want to go with him, who's an art, a girl artist friend of his, is out of town, so otherwise I'd want to take her too. So I don't know, but I do want to get to the museum. So what I was going to say though is I have seen her work in person. She even had one of her body casts there. This woman was probably, and I don't remember exactly how tall or how tall she was, probably four foot eight or something. She was tiny. She, and her waist was like this big. Her body cast was like that big around. She was the tiniest little thing. It was just, I mean, you just wouldn't think, you know. Now, I haven't seen the movie. I've seen, you know, pictures of her, of course, and different things. But I haven't seen the movie version of her life. I don't remember who portrayed her or anything, but whoever it was had to be awful dang tiny. So anyway, what I was going to say, though, is Miss Martha does beautiful paintings of Frida. If you ever want a Frida painting, seek out Seeking for Art Martha. Just saying. Okay. I had to give her... Sorry, Miss Martha, if I embarrassed you. She's probably left now. <laughs> But that hangs up on my inspiration wall next to my barb house. And other things, too. Okay, so Miss Martha was asking about my pencil storage. All right, so let me put this marker cap back on. So let me show you the different things that I have for different uses. I've been doing tons of uh, commission portraits with color pencil. So my color pencils are in trays right now, but I'll show you how I store them when I'm not doing a ton of, pen, of uh, pencil work. Um, hi, Mel Gross. Visit my sister in Georgia this summer, and I would love to visit you, Dee. Um, I'll get with you. Have to email me, and you'll have to tell me, you know, where you're going, what days, and all that. I have to schedule things because here's the thing: I have to plan when I'm going to make those grilled cheeses. <laughs> Somebody in chat was saying that they were going to visit, come by and visit uh, my studio, and and I do. I have people visit quite, you know, quite often. Not not like every day or anything, but the the only qualification you have to know that's all you get fed. You get fed grilled cheeses. If you want anything else, you got to bring your own food. Ask JJ. No, JJ brings her own food. <laughs> Uh, her movies on Netflix. Selma Hayek. Yeah, that's who it was. Thanks, Miko. I couldn't remember. Okay, so how I store my pencils. I have two trays that I keep right next to me. This one just has like some a few, and I know you're going to hear a lot of crinkling, crunchly, moving pencils. So if that bothers you, mute or whatever. <laughs> yes, I have to plan ahead for my grilled cheese. <laughs> Oh, but I gotta say, Lynn, I saw a, uh, I forgot who it was, I think it was Chronicle Books. I retweeted it yesterday or the day before. They were posting, I don't know if it was a, they were, I love, any Chronicle book is an awesome book. If you see something with the Chronicle, little eyeglass logos on it, Chronicle book public, published, uh, there, you're going to get an awesome book. Just trust me. Maybe we need to talk about books, Jeannie. <laughs> um, anyway. 
<laughs> they posted a picture of a grilled cheese made with macaroni and cheese. So I'm going to change my uh, studio visitors lunch menu to macaroni and cheese sandwiches. Yeah, baby. <laughs> okay, so I have, um, uh, what do you call it, um, Bonnie. Vaughn, Vonnie Vaughn, and I did a swap. She sent me all of her, uh, all of her uh, Varathins, her old Varathins. These are for the Sanford ones. They're not as old as Beryl, of course. I don't even know if Beryl made Varathins, but Sanford, these are the old ones with the gold tips. She traded me all these for all my uh, uh, oil pastels because she uses oil pastels. I'm not using my oil pastels. I, I'll use the Varathins. She wasn't using Varathins. So we did a swap. So she sent me her uh, Varathins. These are the old ones, like I said, which these are awesome. And, and Paula, Journal Artista, made a point of this on her show the other night, that these are good for tiny, because they're, they're hard. Varathins, uh, Prismacolor Varathins are harder lead. They're not going to blend, and they're not going to, you know, they're just not going to blend like the other Prismacolor Premieres. Now they're called Premieres. But they're good for tiny areas where you're not going to do any blending anyway. Because, it, like if you're doing a tiny little word or something, or you, you're probably not going to do any blending. You just want to color it in. Varathins are good for that. So that sits here next to some of my other trial pencils. I have a couple of Pablos in here. And, a, you know, just a couple other, you know, extra whites and blacks in there. So that just sits in this part of the tray. These are the colors that I've been using like that I go to for pretty much every portrait. Now, again, I'm not going to use the blue for a person with green eyes, or I'm not going to use the reds if the person has a green shirt on. I'm not going to use every color in every portrait. I don't mean that. But these are my most go-to colors, and they're really kind of out of order. These are my mostly my skin tones. Other than the purple there, although I do use a purple in lipstick. Anyway, so these are kind of like my pencils that I'm using like at the moment <laughs> okay let's see do, 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 grilled cheese oh yeah <laughs> talking about the grilled cheese bibliophiles on unite right after this chapter <laughs> yeah um you know I don't I never mind showing art books you know and I have different kinds of books by category now only my art books and even most of my all my craft books and scrapbooking books, I, I filled up a complete shelf in, or, you know, a bookcase in here. So I took all those down to my library downstairs. So really up here, all I keep up in here in the studio are my art books. Craft books, I had to move out of here. And all my magazines, art and craft magazines, I had to move out of here because there was just no more room. Because I just have two full-on bookshelves for the just the art books. All the other shelves in here are my journals and my own, you know, my own art portfolios and stuff. But I have art books broke out by different categories. I'm going to have mixed media shelf. I have color book, more than one shelf now. I have two shelves of calligraphy books, two shelves of just general art books, another shelf of uh, other artists' sketchbooks that, you know, sketchbooks, printed sketchbooks, you know, not their actual sketchbooks. I mean, like, they, they have sold books of their sketchbooks. Danny Gregory, that kind of thing. So I have shelves of those. Let me know what else. Um, uh, two shelves of clip art. So, you know, I, I have tons of books if y'all ever want to talk books. If y'all have an artist. Hey, Heather. Okay, so, um, yeah, my CC's Pizza closed down. I love when CC's Pizza because they're so, you know, just go in there and just grab all kinds of slices of whatever. But my CC's closed down. The closest one, anyway. Not all. I don't know. I, the closest one to me. So this is what I use for my just I, I know I'll use these every day but that that's not all I use every day so I have this tray let me show you what's in this tray this tray let me take off this and I'll show you what's in this too this tray is all my Prisma colors and bundles and I keep I try to keep this kind of this it's, it's one of those breakfast trays right 
So all my Prisma colors are right here, bundled up. This is and Miss Martha asked how I store my pencils, and you know some of y'all have seen some of this. Julie Topaz has seen she's practically seen my bathroom. So Julie Topaz has been around since day one. Uh, her Vicky, there's a couple of girls that have been around for you know close to six years, five and a half plus. But again, I've only been uploading to YouTube for a year and a half. So, so some of the girls that have been around a lot longer than you, my YouTube. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> sorry, Julie, didn't mean to talk about you in my bathroom. Uh, oh, your CC's closed down too? Oh, okay. Well, I wonder if they all did. I don't know. I haven't kept up with them since mine closed. Yeah, so this is how I store my Prisma colors by kind of like bundles, other than those ones that were in the other tray that I'm using all the time. But I just, if I need another blue, I got my blue bundle, you know, I got the dark greens, I got oranges and pinks and yellows and light oranges, pinks and light purples, dark purples, gray. I got cool grays, gray, brown grays, light blue, and a whole nother uh, bundle of uh, skin colors, right? So this is what I do with my Prisma colors. And they are going this way. And to keep them separate from other pencils, not that you can't interchange. You can mix and match different types of pencils, but I want to know what I'm using. So I keep them separate. So even if I go over here into, you know, my Derwent Artist or my... Um, the Faber-Castell or, you know, other brands, including the one set that Eileen gave me of Luminance. These are my uh, Carndosh Luminance. They get a special home because they're $5 a pencil. <laughs> and this is all I have of them. And they were gifted to me. So I, I don't have enough of these to do a full-on portrait, but I do enjoy using these for other things, you know, some color book pages, just want to play, I love these, but they're very expensive, I cannot afford this many of this pencil, <laughs> so they stay in their nice little protected home, <laughs> just like my Neo colors stay in their tent, where's Jean, <laughs> I tease Jean, because Jean, Jean took all her Neo colors, Neo color um, water soluble crayons, I keep them in my box because they're expensive, you know. Now these, granted, the Karen Dosh Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons will last forever. They will last forever. I've had this set, I think, going on three years, and I use them not every, not as much as my pencils, but I use them quite a bit, and you can't even hardly tell I use them because they're so highly pigmented. So I would recommend if you want to try these. Mom, Mom, I think, got her a set of. 36 or something because when she was here she really liked them too but she knew she wasn't going to use this many colors in her color book in her color books so she just got her a smaller set but she really liked them and I use I always use them with the water brush that's how I use them I'll either color and use the water brush or I'll pull the you know I'll pull the uh, pigment off of a tip with the water brush these only I use with the water brush Anyway, what I was saying, though, is Jean, Music Jean, built her little house. <laughs> I tease her about it. She built, and now granted, Miss Jean can build any kind of a container, storage, and Jen Oz, too. Those two women can whip out any kind of a, you know, they could build a, you know, just like an origami cardboard uh, chipboard house or container for anything. Just like, <laughs> I just, you know, they got uh, mad origami building type skills <laughs> so anyway she built just some containers for all of her neo colors it makes me nervous it makes me nervous to see these babies out in the open unprotected uncovered <laughs> hi sherry you took i you took yours out of your tins too? <gasps> they live in many. Oh yeah, I did see that Sherry. Sherry put hers, I think, in a little plastic, the plastic containers by color. But they're protected, Sherry. I've got to say, at least yours are covered. They have a lid on it. Jeans are out in the open, exposed, fully exposed. <laughs> Galena likes to use clear gesso to activate yours. Yeah. So. <laughs> anyway, 
The same thing for my the other pencils. Speaking of pencil storage, the, the only other pencils I keep in the tin are my ink tins. They stay in their tin too. Now the reason the, the most reason whoops the most reason that I keep these in the in the tin is well there's a couple reasons. One, I like to ha I like to see all the color coordinated right there. I just like them in the tin. So when I want to use them all, I just take this tray and put it in the lid like that, right? So I have two heavy tin trays. But the ink tents are they are water soluble ink in pencil form. And so it's not just watercolor, it's actually ink in a pencil form. So again, they're more expensive than say you're just your watercolor pencils. I just keep them in, because I guess because they're more expensive, I just take better care of them. I don't use them as often, you know, but I want to, I don't want them to get away from me. We're just going to pet for a minute. <laughs> Oh, so tins drive, and mostly tins drive me crazy too, Carrie Ann. I gotta say, but because especially the neo colors, they're crayons. They need to be protected from breakage, so they that's why they're in the tins. The ink tins, I don't know. I just like the ink tins in their bin. But no, those are the only two. Those are the only two things that I actually keep in their boxes or their tins. Um, I did take the my luminance out of their the box that they came in, which was a cushiony box. I mean, it had like it was like vacuum packed. I mean, it's almost like they had a bubble wrap around each pencil. But I did put them in this because they're protected in their little rolly rolly bag, right? Okay, so let's get back to how I store all these pencils. I don't know if this is interesting, but I'm Miss Martha asked. So I have my Derwent Artist, and I have some different ones here. Oh, here's my another ink tin. This is the uh, actually black ink one that I used. It needs to go back in the tin. So I have a set of those, and I just have different sets of different kinds, like a Faber Castell, the Faber Castell. Um, are these the watercolor ones? I think I have a set of watercolor ones, but those are in the other thing. Okay, so this is just other brands, small sets of other brands. I think I even have a Crayola brand in here. And then I have, these are my Dick Blick grays. I did buy a set of Dick Blick's um, pencils, and I, I, I don't love them. I don't love them like I do my Prismacolor, but I do have a set of gray. Um, then Galena and Paula have sent me, um, uh, when they, they had some extra uh, barrel Prismacolor, the old barrel. Now, I gave all my little bits. I had um, a lot of barrel Prismacolors that I wore down to nubs, right? Loose little nubs. And so I gave them all to Cam. Now, he has all those hoarded. <laughs> He's hoarding the barrel Prismacolor nubs. But anyway, I do have this many of them from Paula and Galena. I put them all together and I keep them separate, okay? I still use these, but I keep them separate because I know when I want to do something, they'll have no breakage, <laughs> no problem. So that's the, in this um, bag. And again, the only reason I keep them in the bag like this is because I know those are all my barrels, right? Okay. These are just pens that I use all the time. Um, silver, gold, white, um, you know, just some just some pens. And I do use pens every now and then. So I I just have a, a long one of these long uh, cases for pens in there. And I just keep those handy because I use those. The other handy pen thing I have, this one stays on my desk. This one will have a couple of Sharpies, the Sharpie pen, the Sharpie marker, and my, um, this is the refill for my uh, jet pens that I got from Annie for my birthday, my brush pens. Um, so, like my brush pens. So those are in here. And these sit right here on my desk. They're handy. I use them like I grab one. If I grab a pen, you know, if I want to, you know, there's a Sharpie right there. But then the rest of this is in the tray. This tray sits right over here next to me, too. If you could spend some time in your, if you could, if I could, I promise to be a good girl. <laughs> Judy. 
Uh, I've heard that from before. I've heard that from Sandy Pink. I don't know if I believe you. <laughs> All right. The other tray that sits right here. Okay. Oh, I don't want to lose these addresses for art cards. I got those to send out. <clears throat> The other tray that sits, let me see if I can just kind of tilt. I'm going to move the camera so, you know, just don't freak out. So this is what how my desk looks. I'm going to move the camera for a second, and then we'll try to hopefully refocus. So right here on my desk, all right, is there's Lappy. I'm looking at you guys right there, and then I'm working right here. So you can see how close I am. Right, and Lappy is on a tray. Okay, so there's Lappy right there. Here are my paints. These are the ones I'm trying to use up. <clears throat> Remember on my paint card, I'm trying to use these up. So this sits right in front of me, arm's length in front of me. Okay, But right over here is where I'm talking about where you see. Here's the pencil tray. I'm going to show you this tray next. And then right there is the big tray. Here's all my paint brushes. My water is right here. So there's my paint brushes all right there. Then over here, I'm going to try to turn without disconnecting us. Up there's my, I got lamps there, I got ink, that's all ink right there. And I've done a tour of it, but I just want to show you how close everything is to me. So like literally, like here I am here, there's my trays right there. Here's my paint right here. And then here's Lappy literally right here so I can type to you guys. So that's what goes on right here at the desk. Okay, now let me readjust here. Oh, good, Martha. So then this tray is the second tiered one over. This just has like erasers. Like, look, I got all kinds of little bits of erasers, extra sharpeners, um, my brush to clean things off, my magnifying glass, which I don't use this now that much now that Jean made me download the Maglite amp. Amp, app on my phone but you know some things are so tiny I can't read that so I gotta get me a you know I gotta magnify that some wax for needles and wax uh, erasers here's some nubs now these are not quite nubby enough to sit to go in here but I keep my nubs now in these uh, Prismacolor Prismacolor Prima Flower the old flower milk Prima got flowers jars so you can see how many times how much I use white and black when I get down to these nubs now I still I have pencil extenders I could put these in a pencil extender in a pinch um, but you know anyway so I'll keep them in these these aren't quite ready to go in there like this one probably is right <laughs> so I have different layers of <laughs> Pencil nubs. So, you know, these are not quite ready for the jar. <laughs> nubby container. Yes, Miko. I have pencil nubby containers. <laughs> and then again, I got, these are the pencils I draw with all the time. If I'm just sketching for myself, I can't sketch and draw with these on um, camera because they're too light. You can't see anything if I sketch with these little babies. But these are the pencils that I personally sketch and draw with. They're just Pentel, oh no, Papermate. Papermate Sharp Writer Number 2 Technical Pencil Disposables. So, you know, they have the, you can get as much lead like if you want like that. But they're disposable. And I buy them in packs of 10. I don't know, they've probably gone up in price, but I buy them in packs of 10. I do not use the red rubber erasers. I put on these white, these. I use these. Plastic, I buy these to put on these. That's why I buy these to put on these. I don't like using the red, you know, I mean, I have used them, but I try not to. <laughs> Most all of them are brand new because they just can have a tendency to smear or leave red. So I just like these pencils. Okay, since we're talking art supplies, I just purchased some Daniel Smith watercolors. They're expensive, but he makes some gorgeous colors. I could cry when I use them. That's how beautiful they are. Oh, Angie. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Yeah, I did see the girl that you were working on the last... Uh, I forgot what you named her, but yeah, I did see that. <laughs> no, right. Now, I'm not a watercolor. I mean, I have some watercolors, some of the koi sets, and I just don't, 
in general, I don't do that much watercolor. I've used watercolors and I've shown y'all a couple of my watercolor paintings, but I'm not really a watercolorist. I like pencils. <laughs> I always have. I've always liked pencils. And, uh, and I've, you know, I've used Prismacolor back since when they were only barrel Prismacolor pencils. And I've watched the evolution and the downward spiral of the quality. <laughs> but I still use them. Okay, so that's what sits right next to me. Right, right on my desk. So that's how I store those. Now let me get to some of how I store the other pencils and stuff. Then I have... Right up on that shelf where I showed you, right up there on the shelf where my uh, all my inks are, on the bottom two shelves, I have some trays. Okay, so here's one of the things that I have. I keep things, I like bundles because I can grab and go. I know what's in them, right? I know what's in every bundle. So this is my, uh, it's one of the drawers out of my tower. I have a Tower O pencils. This is going to get long, guys. I'm just saying. I'll show you how I store everything. <clears throat> Miss Martha, but <laughs> we'll have if we do a project, it's going to have to be something separate. I don't know if we'll have time for that today, but I'm going to show you the pencils. We'll talk pencils. It's been a while since we talked pencils or pens or markers. So these are the um, super tip Crayola super tips. I do not use Copics, although I did enter the Copic contest. There's a Copic contest going around right now. You enter the Copic contest, you can win. I think it's a box of what is it, a hundred of them or something. So if I want them, I would be trying to use them. But, <laughs> but I'm not going to go invest in Copics knowing that right now I don't have, you know, I don't have the time to totally learn another medium. And also I just don't use markers that much except in color books. These are awesome to use in your color books. Again, test them to make sure they're not going through. But these are great just to do lay down a little bit of of uh, where's a piece of paper? Where's that one? To lay down a little bit of. Um, now I gotta put something hard behind it. To lay down a little bit of color, say a flower petal, right? And then take your color pencil and start shading. So that's what I like my markers for. Not for in in depth blending and coloring things because I do that with color pencil. So Cam, now that's another thing, Cam, my grandson, who I hope y'all watched that show the other day where we FaceTime and you got to meet him a little bit, uh, see a couple pieces of his art. <clears throat> and uh, I, I have a bag of color, I have a bag of crayons, Martha, that I swear I'm going to send you, but I haven't done it. <laughs> Martha, I have a huge bag of Crayola crayons that I need to send you before it gets hot, because if I send them to you in the summer... You know, they'll probably melt, so I don't want that to happen. So these are just Crayola Super Tip Kids Markers, right? And I won't go through how I, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'm just going to show you how I store things. They stay in here. But I'll have, like, these are my um, Sharpie pens, not markers. I write with these. I write with Sharpie pens. This is my go-to pen writing. If I'm journaling in my Moloskinas... This is my writing pen that I use. I, mostly black, but I mean I have a set of the colors. I have cheap Michaels gel pens. Again, great for color books. That's why these are in here. I'm not really sure why I put these in here. I think I was just using them. But then I have the Bic Crystals. I have them in both in a couple of different sizes. Again, the Bic, just plain Bic. Bic will write over any kind of acrylic. You don't have to worry about them not, not writing because Bics will write over everything. I think they're called Byros over in uh, UK. Uh, <clears throat> the Bic is the brand of Byro. So uh, anyway, so that's how I just store that. That all sits right here on a shelf. Handy for me to reach. Now, uh, let me show you the other color pencils before I show you my pencil drawing pencils. All right, so I have, and Paula and some of the others have all, I think Barb does it too. <clears throat> we use these scrapbook tote, um, scrapbook like supply totes for pens. And this is where I used to keep my pencils all the time when I was doing other, I wasn't doing as many commissions. This is back before my family goes, you need to start back on your commissions, Missy. 
So, <laughs> but so I I have my color pencils much more handy than I I have previously. But that's one of these scrapbook totes. Now again, it's zoomed right up, and it's not full because I don't have my the pencils that you saw in the trays don't fit in here anymore. But this is one of those scrapbook totes that it's very nice to if you store it on its side like this you can keep it on your desk and just reach in it's very handy to keep on a desk if you just have this many pencils you can keep it on your desk set it on its side and you see everything it's also good for markers like um, your and I don't have any distress markers or any of those kind of watercolor markers like Eileen likes the watercolor markers by Terry um, well, we're giving you some mojo right now, Miss Martha. We need to see some more Frida. We need some. We need more Frida, Martha. <laughs> I tell you, everybody that got one of your paintings, they loved it. You need the you need the mojo of the of the girls because they love your stuff, Martha. Okay, Barb. See you later. You're welcome. So, yeah, Barb has one of these. Uh, Paula has one. There's a lot of people that use the totes. And you just keep them on the side. And what's nice about that is, especially for markers that you don't want to store up or down. You want to store your markers on their side. And there's different people that have different theories about your pens and your markers. But it is good to keep. And I do keep this on its side on a shelf. It's just not like right handy because these are things I don't use every day. Like the ones I use in the tray. Okay, but again, more Byros or Bix, whichever one you want to call it. I have those in here. I have um, my jelly rolls. I have, a, and I keep them bundled by kind. These are the glitter ones. I have the souffles. These are the, uh, what ones are these called? The glaze. So I have them with a rubber band around. So if I know I want a glaze, they're right here. If I want the souffle, they're right here. If I want the, the, the jelly rolls, they're right there. Again, you know, I have them just by bundle. These are the, these are the glitter jelly rolls. These are the fl um, flat ones. So I just keep them in, you can see right here, I just keep them in one of these um, totes. And they're on a shelf on its side, just like this. But I can just reach in and grab what I want. Lots of white pens. I got tons of white pens. Some work better than others. Some quit work, and y'all know how that works. I guess I just found that the best ones are the uh, <clears throat> the, the uh, Jelly Roll brand. Where's the, my little pen? I used to like the ones, and they still are good. Don't get me wrong; they're good. The ones from uh, you can get them from Jet Pens too. They're the uh, ones with the Japanese writing on them. I think this is one. Yeah. The uh, Uniball ones. Get them from Jet Pins. But these, I found, do not clog at all. Okay? They're just the Jelly, jelly Roll brand white. It just seems like I really never have... They just always work. Now, I'm going to qualify that by saying if you start using these over acrylic paint, anything you use over acrylic paint other than a Bic pen, if you're going to, it's a Sharpie, any of it, you're going to start drying out the marker tip or clogging up your pen tip going over acrylic. If you're going to want white over acrylic, go with the Posca. Again, this is the only Posca color I have is white. But you can write over acrylic paint with these because they're paint. They're acrylic paint in a pen. So if you're going to, I would recommend this over your jelly roll because your jelly roll won't last over acrylic. But these Poscas, and they're, you know, you can get a nice sharp point. So, yeah. You can get them at Jet Pens for like $1.50, $1.75, two bucks maybe. And if you, I think it's if you order $25, it's free shipping, something like that in, in the United States. You've been collecting the Copics. You gave your Prisma markers to, yeah, I gave um, my Prisma markers and the couple of Copics that I have to Cam, Martha, because he uses them. He and, and um, Paula sent him some of her uh, Prisma, I mean, her Copics, and, I, and he loved those. So, yeah, anytime he has an extra 
Well, I would say, you know, they're like seven or eight dollars. But if you go to Michael's or you have a our Hobby Lobby with a coupon, you can get them for, you know, 40, 50 percent off. So he'll buy them one at a time, the colors he needs. <clears throat> hey, Janet. You feel, it makes you feel good. Oh, I haven't got far. I have. I, wait for it. Wait for it. This just turned into Miss Martha answering Miss Martha's. How do I store my pens and pencils? Okay, and and because I store them together. See, I got pens and pencils in here. Okay, so now back to the pencils. Oh well, no, not yet. I still have these pens. These are some uh, the Sharpie highlighters. These, if you want to neon something, I love these. And they also have the little hanging things. These are kind of cool if you got, you know, the kids love these because you can hang them, you know, on your backpacks and stuff. They look cool. Then I have a set of these. And I, and I used to use these just to carry, I'd carry these around just for, just to have some color with me. But it seems like any time now that I do draw out in public, I don't carry any color with me. Just a pen and a pencil and anything that I can fit. I'll, I'll empty out this right here. And just carry a couple of pencils, a couple of pens, a brush pen, and then you know just a few things, and zip this up. And this is my this is my carry around. If I go to the museum and want to draw, it's my little Mistel. This is my little Mistel uh, pencil holder that I bought from her years ago. Uh, but when it's just sitting on my desk, I have all these right there. Okay, so these are those woodless, uh, what are the, who even makes them, I think these are Progresso, but there's a couple different brands of the woodless pencils. Again, that's why they're in a baggie, because I had taken them out. Um, I have a set of um, the, the neon color Crayola ones, another set of just, uh, you know, the cheap Crayola ones or whatever. Um, then in the watercolor pencil area, other than my ink tints, which I showed you, I keep those in the tin. Where do I get my Jelly Roll pens? I get the, I don't really usually now, um, if you want these kind of like in sets like this, you can get them at Michael's and get them in uh, sets. Hobby Lobby has them occasionally, but I do buy my sets of three whites in at Hobby Lobby. They come in a set of three. Or you can get a gold and a silver at Hobby Lobby. And I always use a coupon to get them for a couple of dollars. And they're usually, Angie Bell, if you go to Hobby Lobby, they're usually at the checkout counter. It's hanging there at the like last minute purchase. But the sets like these, Michael's with a coupon. Okay. And I haven't had to buy any for a while. I just don't use them that much. Other than the the uh, gold, silver, and white. Okay. Uh, anyway, so co um, I have this old set of Wexall Derwent. It even says England on them. These are probably my other than my old barrel pencils that I still have. You know, nubs. <laughs> These are probably the oldest pencils I have. They are watercolor pencils. They are old. They are old. They're, they're the gray ones. It says Rexall Derwent watercolor, and it has England on it. So these, and I don't, again, I don't use watercolor pencils that much. If I'm going to do something with a watercolor wash or something, I'll use, go. my first go-to is my Neocolor 2 water-soluble crayons, then the ink tints, and then carrying on down. I just don't do that much with watercolor. I use my acrylic paints so much for the washes. But I'm just showing you what I have here. The other ones that I have here are, these are the, it's hung up there, hang on. Okay, so these are my um, Prismacolor um, watercolor pencils. Again, these are, I know they, I think they've come out with a new set. I gave all my chalk pencils, pretty much all my chalk ones. I don't like, I personally do not like or love pastels. I don't like the feel of chalk. If I have to do life drawings or something like that, especially, you know, in classes or just life drawing in general, if you want to use a big sheet of paper and do, you know, chalk drawings, I like, I would rather much use a Conti crayon than chalk. I just don't like the the scratchiness, the feel of, and the dryness of chalk. That's just me. Not saying there's anything wrong with it. I just personally have so many other options that chalk is the last one that I pick. 
So I gave all my chalk pencils to Cam and Boo because they they would use them. So these are the uh, Prismacolor watercolor. Again, I'm not sure how old these are. I just don't use them that much. But I do have, you know, a nice set of watercolor. A couple of sets of watercolor pencils. Again, this is some more. These are my own other uh, ink tents that were I bought separately, not in the tin. These are just uh, separate individual individual ink tents pencils. Okay, so let's see. Do I have any chalks left? What are these? No, these are watercolor as well. I have a few of the Albert Durer Faber Castell watercolor pencils. This is just probably a set of I don't know what twelve. I don't know how many came in. This is again had these forever watercolor pencils. Uh, okay, so are these the only chalk? Okay, here's my only chalk I have white <laughs> pencils that's the only white that's the only and I do have um, and I'll show you that in the next bundle of pencils a lot of Conti crayon type things to draw hey whippy we're just kind of going through pencil ch chat today pencil and pen um, and then I do have all kinds of like different kinds of white pens and markers paint pens big ones I have a white you know the painter the Sharpie. These are all white painter pens, paint pens. Nothing works as far as a paint pen that I found like the Posca. That This is the ultimate white paint pen in my opinion. Now, if all these other ones work for you, you know, that's great. I just prefer the Posca paint pen. And again, this is the only Posca I have is white. I don't know how the... Jean has a lot of the colors. Um, Eileen probably has a lot of the colors. But this is the only one that I, because I know what I'm going to use. I could buy the whole set of Posca paint pens, but I won't use them. <laughs> you know, I got my Americana craft paint here. But, but the white, this that goes over, goes over acrylic paint, that's the kind of detail I'll use in stars, a twinkle in an eye, or something like that. So I would recommend the Posca, uh, for the Uniball Posca, I think it's Uniball, just Uni, Uniposca. Yeah, but I get them at, you get them at Jet Pens. Yeah, I like my Conti crayons. I have black, white, and sepia color. That's it. Um, okay, so, and then other than that, I've just got your general pens, some general pens, a whole bunch of my uh, Ticonderoga blacks that I buy for the eraser. But I have a bunch of those. Just general, you know, random pens and pencils, you know, just in on the side pocket. So there's nothing special about those. They're just all kinds of, just your ballpoint pens and pencils and nothing special. But I have quite a few different ones. These are all different colors. I've got a pink, a orange, a blue, a green. So they're just, you know, that. I got a glue stick in there, an emery board, some... Uh, just regular pins and then up here let's see what do I have up here I have a, a flag a pin flag you know the post-it note pin flag I got a flashlight oh here's another one of these this goes down in here sharpies and then on this side I just have some um, the Crayola slick sticks let me come over here on this side so you can well let me, wait a minute let me go this way let's go this way so over here I have my slick sticks and the few um, Faber-Castell, what are they called? You know, these little lipstick things. I forget what they're called. There's a name for these. I know one of y'all will tell me in a minute. Have I ever used the paint markers? I have a few in white. You know, I have a few paint markers in white. I just don't use paint markers. I just, I mean, I I probably have used a few over the years, Martha, but other than some white ones, I just don't use, and I, oh, and a gold and a silver. I do use a gold and a silver every now and then, but every, again, I don't even use the gold and silver paint pens, the kind you shake up with the ball in it, since I found these, since I started using these, the, the uh, gel, the Pentel gel, these right here that you get in gold and silver. I don't even use the paint pens anymore since I've, I've found these, the silver and gold gel. So, yeah, I, don't, I haven't bought them in years. Gelatos, thank you. <laughs> gelatos. So I have a few gelatos, maybe, I don't know, eight, ten gelatos. 
and I have those stuck in here uh, alongside of my Crayola slick sticks. Again, I've used them a few times in art journaling. I just don't use them that often. Nothing wrong with them or anything like that. And I know now um, Tim just Tim Holtz has come out with you know his version of the crayons. You know, I, I'm not going to buy them because I won't use them. I I got enough other stuff that I use every day. My Americana paints, my Prismacolor pencils, if, you, know, you know, my Neo Color 2s. Those are the things I literally use every single day. This I've used over the years, but I don't use it all the time. I hardly ever take out the slick sticks or the uh, gelatos. So if I'm not using those, I'm not spending money on, you know, Rangers crayons that just me not to say anything wrong with them but you know let's use what we have this i've had for a long long time all right so and that sits on the shelf right over here i have other totes that are handy that are ready to go like i have some empty totes like uh, you know just other sizes you know these this is like i think a michael's brand one you can get these for like five bucks at walmart and michael's same thing for the smaller ones the pencil cases i have these they're at the ready so if i need to just grab a tote and throw it in something and take it with me other than my huge rolly tote that i used for scrapbooking things that i don't ever use anymore so i have that kind of thing for um you know, Denise got me this at a yard sale. It's a, um, it's one of the uh, Anna Griffith cases. I think she got this full of stuff for me at a yard sale for a couple of dollars. So again, if I want to grab and go something in this size or depending on where I'm going, I got, you know, things like this. Um, so the last pencil and pen holder that I want to show you, and I've shown it before, but it's been some months, maybe a year, is this one. This one has all my, um, and I have this sitting here because I do want to do, I want to find someone to give this to. One of y'all sent me this, dra uh, drawing pencils. I think it was, might have been either Sammy Jammy or, uh, anyway, because uh, I know somebody could get some use out of that. This is my, this right here is a army surplus. I'm not sure if it was a map carrying. Let me just get a white pencil here so you can see all the pockets. Um, this is on the outside of it. It's got all kinds of straps and Velcro. And I don't know if it could go on, it could go on something. But anyway, <laughs> it's an army surplus bag. Hubster got it for me. Ordered online. It's got all kinds of... Um, you know zippers and bungee type stuff in it there's the front and there's the back it's got all this velcro on here that you can attach anything has velcro you can attach on this outside thing i don't use any of this stuff on the outside but on the inside so you can tighten it up with the little bungee thing the pull thing it's got all kinds i mean it's a it's a regular army something i don't know what they used it for if it was a medic bag if it was a map bag but it's an art supply pencil holding bag now <laughs> this right here is only black and white with maybe a one or two reds black and white pencil black and white pens with the, the occasional red okay but this will actually if, if I take my time I can actually zip this up well, without these cases in here, I'll show you that in a second. That's just in the side pocket there. It's got all kinds of huge pocket space. And as long as you're not closing it up, oh my gosh, look at all that space. I can still get more stuff in. This sits on my shelf right over here as well, where I know my black and white pencils, my black and white pens, other than the pens that are right here that I use every single day. <laughs> Yeah, the army pack. Yeah, I know. Bye, Iffy. Oh, I forgot to show. I wanted, while she was here, I wanted to show, because this is an impromptu. This is not a planned stream. I'll show it on Monday. She sent me some awesome collage stuff. I'll show that uh, on Monday when she's here again, because I wanted her to be here. 
so I have done, and I don't know if this would be something that interests you. If, if you want to see, and I've done it before, but I don't know if it's on Ustream. I mean on YouTube. I did it on Ustream, and I'm not sure. I'll have to go check. And I'm sure I've added some things since then. But I did a little, I don't want to call it a review because I didn't review every pencil. But I showed you all the different pencils and the different pens that I keep in here. There's probably a good 25 different types of pencils in here. Everything from the general, you know, 8B, 12B, um, the Kimberly, you know, the big thick ones that are, are light, real, real dark, to all kinds of water soluble. There's a sketch and wash. There's just all kinds of black and white. And there's one or two chalks, a couple of, uh, you know, but that's all, everything black and white in pencil. And so you can see those. These are my, um, these are very, very old. They're, they're like, I call them almost antique. <laughs> they're probably vintage anyway. Conti crayons, a set of white. I have a set of black. I actually have a couple sets of black. And it also a uh, sepia to brown. And they're just uh, for drawing large, like on, you know, chalk. Then I also have a couple of sets of the, these are the graphic uh, graphite sticks. These are water-soluble graphite sticks. You can get them at, they changed the name. They used to be called something different. But uh, there's a 6B, a 2B, and a 4B. And I think you can get 8, 10, and 12B that are even darker. But these are water-soluble graphite. And I've done demos on these, but I don't know how long it's been. But let me just, I don't want to flash out the camera too much. There it goes. Anyway, <laughs> but here's a 2B a 4B, and I'll just do a quick little, and a 6B, and let me just grab a brush, and they're water-soluble. Now, the thing about the water-soluble graphite, it will go a long, long way. I mean, this will just go and go and go. I mean, there's a lot of graphite in one little bit of scribble, and these are great for doing, you know, large uh, drawings or, you know, you quick sketching. Okay, so that, I just wanted to show you that. So these are awesome for that. And you get these at Hobby Lobby. Or I did, anyway. They're, like, again, they've changed names. These are the newer ones. I have some of the older ones around here somewhere, too. And then I have a few erasers. You know, I love, my erasers that I use are the, the white plastic ones. There's a new one. There's an old one. There's one stuck on there. Looks like something, I don't know. This one can go in the trash. Uh, it looks like something leaked or something. What's in there? I don't know, but that's sticky. I'm going to wash that off. Let me throw that in my water. I'm going to clean that one off. Let's just put the new one back in there. And then on, on the other side, the other side are all pins. So there's just a variety of different, everything from a ballpoint to a biro to the Sharpies, Sharpie pins, Sharpie markers, all kinds of, you know, the fiction. I think that's how he says friction friction I, I don't use I just use these for sketching I don't really I'm not really I've got a couple of those um, these are I'm not picky about a pen if I'm gonna sketch the only time I want to make sure if I'm doing any kind of a color wash over any pen I want to make sure it was waterproof you know like a sharpie or whatever but just for drawing you know sketching anything with a pen I'm not really particular um, writing, I write with my Sharpie pen, not the marker. These are the Sharpie pens. Tiny, tiny, tiny. I, this, I write very, very small for myself. When I'm writing here, I'll pick up the fattest Sharpie I can find to write notes so you see it on camera. But when I'm writing personally, I write very small. Like, um, okay, here, let me show you. Here's, here's this week's, I keep track of how, who I've sent birthday cards out this week here's my list of cards I sent out that this week this is how small I write normally keep that on the calendar I write very very tiny okay um so again you know if you want some time I'll do a show where we go through every every individual pen or pencil if anybody would want to see that but you can see how much fits in there Look at all these. Tons of pens, tons of pens, Sharpies, Biro. I, I'm calling them Biros or Bix. Bix here. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, Carrie. Yeah, thanks, Janet, for posting that link to Carrie. Carrie had to leave this morning. She had an appointment. So she came on this morning. This show started out 
as Carrie helping me testing some lighting and camera things. And she, you know, she only had an hour this morning. She had to leave. But then it ended up with people getting notification that I went live. And so this is what it's ended up. Just kind of a random pen and pencil kind of talk, right? So anyway, that these are the pencils. And this case right here, again, stays right there handy on the shelf. So if I know if I need something black or white in pen or pencil, it's right here. But again, <laughs> this one sits literally at my fingertips. So either one, I know where they, they are handy. So, and that's just, uh, that's not including any of my inks, my calligraphy inks, my calligraphy pens, my, um, you know, any of, any of those, or paints, or, you know, I have watercolor spray inks, dip inks for, you know, dip pens. And those I just keep. Other than the ones with feathers on them, which I consider the ones with feathers more decorative, they're in another thing up on the pen shelf. But here's my, uh, these are my uh, calligraphy pens and nibs. And so I keep my calligraphy pens in this jar here. And then extra nibs, some are in here. But I have another tray of nibs somewhere. Where are they? Anyway, I got a whole tray. I had a whole thing set of uh, nibs that here it is. Queen Pam made. Queen Pam made me this nib storage some years ago, and it's just a little. I got a card, her card in there. It's just a little pen holder that she made out of. She made out of a uh, corrugate, the kind of cardboard that has the corrugate kind. And the reason you have to use that is because, look, this is to put your nibs in. Oh, let me put a piece of paper behind it. Let's see here. Let me get a small piece. Oh, here we go. So you can see, so you can see each individual level. So she has a little magnet on it. It's magnetized. She has it completely covered with clear packing tape to make it extra sturdy. Okay, and you flip it open this way and this way. And they'll pop up like that. So every level, and what it is, is you can stick the nibs in the corrugate. Now, of course, you want, it, you want it, not the nib part down, but the stem part. And they just slide right into the corrugate. So let me show you the different levels there. So you can see, then the next level... In the next level. So you just stick your nibs down inside the corrugate. Isn't that just like the cleverest thing ever? I know, right, Blondie? Hey there, hubs. So it's just a little corrugate. And she's she said she didn't invent this. She said that she got it somewhere else. I can't tell you where because I got it from her, but she did say she didn't invent this. But she made this one. That's all I got to say. She made this one. So you can see from the side all the different levels. See how they're one, the shorter? So you see them all. So when you're looking straight at it, you see all your nibs, even though they're at different levels. See right there? Isn't that just the awesomest thing ever? So this is where I keep all my other nibs other than the ones that are actually in the pens. And I'm bad about cleaning them since I'm not, I don't do the calligraphy all the time anymore. But these are all my calligraphy things. And Angie Bell even sent me a fresh, a fresh, uh, the Chinese inking brush. So Angie Bell sent me a new one. So there's just all different kinds. Let me see here. Uh, I'll just show them to you. All different kinds. And again, I'm bad about cleaning. And mostly I just use black ink. I have tons of color. But I don't really, if I'm going to use a color ink anymore, it's with a brush. You know, I use the ink as like a paint. You know, rather than for the uh, for calligraphy. Because I don't really do any calligraphy anymore. Except for a few commissions I do every now and then. And then it's always with black ink. So you can see. <laughs> Do I? no, I don't, Whippy. I just this is this is calligraphy is just it, just uh, nothing fancy. I mean, I've I've done um, this is for a nice thick line. I've um, I've done writing with pens, 
you know, I mean, uh, brushes. I like using, if I'm, I'm trying to use more brush and inking, especially when I'm doing that, like the Inktober's. I have to find, what did I do with my Inktober book? I need to find my Inktober. I think I pulled them out of the sketchbook and put them in a separate folder. Or my ink but anyway, all the Inktober's, the Jake Parker challenge, those are all done with brush and pens. Not this kind of, not an, uh, not a calligraphy fountain dip or any of those kind of pens. Just a brush and um, uh, dipping it in ink. Not a brush pen. Um, in other words, not like, you know, not like this. Not like a brush pen. But actually the taking a paintbrush and dipping it in ink. I, I, I don't know if that made sense. <laughs> okay, then I have a few just... Um, you know, nothing in the nib, nothing in the holders. A couple like this, you know, a couple different ones. Have my, uh, couple of, I have a few fountain pens, and I have my uh, parallel pen from Lisa. Love that. And uh, some pipettes, a couple of pipettes for pulling out, you know, drawing out ink out of the bottle. And then these are very old. These are great. That's just a marker one. These are great, and I don't even know if they make them anymore. These are great for practicing if you ever want to learn calligraphy. Okay? They're cheap. You can get a set. You can get a set of three different little cartridge things. Now, I don't have the cartridge in this one, but you put the cartridge on here. Okay? And you can get three different ones of the little nibs in a set. It's probably, I don't know, 20 bucks nowadays. Back when I bought them, they were probably like, these are like $3.95. But <laughs> these are all, you know, some of these are older than others. And um, the only thing about these, unless they've changed it, the cartridge ink is not light fast. It's great though if you want to learn calligraphy and you have to do hours and hours of stroke and stroke and stroke and stroke and stroke and stroke. You know, the same thing. You know, lines and lines and slashes and, oh, here's another one. Um, and all that. These are great because they're inexpensive. You don't have to refill them. You just change the little cartridges. And they're, they're good for practicing. Schaefer. Yeah, Schaefer. These are Schaefer. And they come in different nib sizes. There's a small, medium, and a large. Um, these are very... This one right here, I can't even tell you how old this one is. So, anyway. And you can buy the little cartridge. What I'm saying is that they're, that they're not good for a professional calligraphy calligraphy piece because the ink will it's not light fast. But it's great for practicing you know, pages and pages and pages of line work to, uh, you know, to, to do calligraphy because it, it takes, trust me, it's going to take a lot. Um, but anyway, those are good for practicing. I would recommend these over a marker. You can get these cheap, you know, calligraphy markers. That It's not the same as a metal nib. You want to practice. If you're not going to practice with a dip, and how I use this is I've got, you know, Angie even sent me a fresh one, but I've had a couple of these before. These are the stones. Now, these stones are made for grinding your ink, the Chinese grinding ink sticks, and, and, and making your own ink with them. What I like these for is I squirt in my inks. You know, I've got a few different kinds. But your, you know, your ink, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just put it in here and then I just pull off the ink rather than dipping it in an ink bottle. Okay, I'll fill, because this is slanted. I don't know if you can tell, but it's slanted. So you can just draw off, you know, pull off your ink or dip it in a little tray there, a little, a little well. You can dip it in the little well and use it. I would, I much prefer this than dipping it into an ink bottle, okay, or even a lid, or, you know, taking out a pipette full and putting it in something, and I just prefer this. Same for a brush. When I'm using the brush, I'll put the ink in here, and then I just take my brush, let me get that brush out of water, that one right there, um, you know, take your, uh, like, here's a liner brush, for instance, just 
take your brush and just w roll it through the ink and pull it out because it's a nice slope it's a well right there and it's a slope and you can just pull it through like that I got the brush wet so you can see it there see so you can roll your your brush through the ink this is my favorite inking tool <laughs> is this this and this and then your pen or your brush that I would totally recommend and then again I use all different kinds of inks for let me show you some of the inks that I use <clears throat> I mean for for just painting I've got you know these kind of acrylic inks and they come in a ton of colors um, you know acrylic inks but for like inking whether it's calligraphy or like inktober or that kind of inking I've got you know you can get a different kinds of these uh, Chinese inks uh, you have the black cat ink you know you can use these kind of this is old Kohinoor these were for filling up the old pens this one's good you know I would recommend black cat or these Chinese inks and then you just put them in the little tray and you can either pull it through with the brush or your pen but oh but what I was going to say is if you're going to be practicing calligraphy real calligraphy and you want to learn calligraphy and you're going to end up using you know calligraphy nib type things eventually even if you're just starting out you probably aren't going to it's probably good to do it that way but I just don't see most people especially teenagers taking the time to dip their pens and stroke by stroke you know practice pages and pages and pages and pages of one stroke with this but they will do it with this <laughs> you know and uh, with a pen that they can just pull out and practice with again because it's metal because you're practicing with metal whereas if you're using these that's not one if you're using the markers you're what you're doing here is you're practicing with a felt you're pr it's a different feel and it's a total it's a total different feel the felt calligraphy markers the disposable just practice pens you know and they're all in different sizes this is just a narrow one you can get them wider and stuff but if you practice with the felty I don't know if that's what it is you know the fibrous marker type tip it's a different feel than it is with metal you want to practice if you know you want to do calligraphy and you're going to practice for hours and hours you want to do it with metal okay you want to do it with a metal tip that's just you know, that's just Dee Dee talking, you know, you do what you want, do what you want. Okay, so that's some of the inks that I use. Um, what else? Put that back up on the shelf. Uh-oh, drop something. Anytime I hear something drop, I, you know, I get kind of nervous. Because I never know what that is. <laughs> Uh-oh, what did I drop? And then I do have a couple fancy. Um, Darcy brought me back. Um, Darcy brought me back. I think it's this one. I think it's this one. No, maybe it's this one. Boo bought me one and Darcy has bought me one. I don't remember which. But anyway, I think this is the one that the glass... The glass pen Darcy brought me back from Italy. It's all handmade glass, hand blown glass. It comes with a little thing to protect the nib. It's a glass pen, and that's in a box. And Boo, I think that was, yeah, that's the one Darcy got me. And Boo got me this one. It's a glass, but it has a metal nib. So this was a birthday present from Boo. So I keep those in their boxes because they're glass. So they need to stay in their boxes. So there's that. What else? Um, so yeah, looking around, trying to see what else. Do you got the card? Oh, <laughs> yeah, CB. Yeah, uh, was it was it Angie or I forgot who it was. There's a couple girls that were saying you needed that card, CB. You needed that card. So we sent it to you. It has a martini. 
are. For those wondering, what are you talking about? Well, CB needed a martini. <laughs> so, yeah, that card's going to you. And I also just sent you a birthday card. Let's see. Whose birthday is it? CB's coming up. Let me see this week. I sent out all the birthday cards and the... Here's the art cards and birthday card list. This is this week. Just so y'all can see how many cards I sent. This is this week. This is how many cards I sent out this week. Art cards and birthday cards. And I keep them on the calendar. Now, I don't say, I don't remember who got what card. Who got, like, did you get a Sherry card? Did you get a, you know, I, I don't really can't keep up with which card I send to which people. Nor do I keep up with who gets which art card. But I sent out a lot this week. Okay, so I'm checking the birthdays. Hang on, guys. My birthday book. Um, what day is today, anyway? The 8th? Okay, Jean was on the 6th. Leah was the 7th, which was yesterday. And she's the Facebook and here. And I sent her a card. And Linda, art unit. Just so FYI, who's coming up? Uh, Linda is the 12th. So y'all, shh. <laughs> and then uh, next, or the end of the uh, next week, I'm looking at the calendar there. Then we, in the third week of April, we have We Hootie, Artsology Dad. Erica, who else? I got a few other people. So, I sent you two, but only one arrived. Yeah, probably in some male person's home. Yeah, it could be whippy, but I'm glad you got you got the second one right. Okay. So anyway, um. Oh, and then as far as like storage and totes, let me see if I can reach up to this because I don't use this that often. Uh, especially since I don't, I don't scrapbook or go to crops or, you know, anything like that. But I do have, I'll show you this real quick. It'll give us something to do for the last few minutes. <laughs> We're obviously not getting any project done, so it's just kind of like, you know, storage day. But I have this tote right here. One of these totes. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's, you know, one of these kind of totes. The scrapbook kind of totes. I'm trying to tilt it so you can see the whole thing. Let me see about backing up the camera. Hang on. Let me lift it up a little. Hang on. Let's see if I can do this just a little. Hang on, guys, because it's not fitting under the camera. There we go. So one of these totes. And in here I keep all kinds of tools and things. I used to keep more scrapbooky type stuff that I'd take to, you know, you know, any, whether a scrapbook or a craft get-together or whatever. Now I pretty much keep a lot of other things in it that I just use, like, every now and then. Like, let's see. Hang on, guys. Get this focused again. I think we're still focused, even though I zoomed way back. Okay, you got number two. Like my uh, crocodile, my uh, corner chomper. I have, you know, different kinds of things like this. This is the kind of stuff that I keep in here now. You know, a pair of pliers. <laughs> Extra scissors and paint things and other corner chompers. And, you know, paint glue. I mean, uh, a paint pen thing. Um, my uh, E6000 glue. What else is in here? My scissors that are the, um, if y'all remember these Fiskars, ergonomic type scissors. I really don't use these, but I love them. <laughs> I use, I used to use them, I should say. I don't use them anymore that much. So this kind of stuff, so I have kind of tools. I have all the, uh, the little uh, basic gray files for filing, cutting, you know, uh, sandpapering down different things in scrapbooking. Some of y'all will know what this I mean by this. Some of you won't. <laughs> I'm just showing you what I keep in the tool caddy. What else do I keep? Oh, I have a vintage. Here's a vintage roller, a vintage uh, brayer. Got one of those in there. What else is in here? Oh, I got I got two or three different kind of punches in here. The, the hole punching things. And... Um, Where's Barb when I need her? The old, uh, these are very old. The, the uh, 
pinking shears. This is Wiss or Weiss, W I S S, Newark, New Jersey. Patent number so and so, patent pending. <laughs> Just as the, these must have been grandmas, okay? So, what else is in here? <laughs> are, we, are we having fun? <laughs> oh my goodness. What else do I have in here? Um, oh, and then I got a little box. Let's, I need to see what's in these boxes. I haven't looked through these boxes for a while. Sanding block. You know, again, scrap scrapbooking stuff. I know you wouldn't think you'd need a sanding block, but you do. Um, pop dots. A cr paper crimper. We've got to have paper crimpers. More pop dots. And again, I think I need to do a... I haven't done a scrapbooking show for months. Got tons of pop dots in there. I won't pull those all out. You know what pop dots look like. Lots of pop dots. What else? I'm spinning it around and looking. Um, okay, let's see what's in here. And then it's got a tray in the bottom, too. It's got another tool tray down in here. Oh, and then I've got erasers in here. What is in this one? Business cards. Oh, I got all kinds of things in here. Let's check this out. It's a treat for me, too. So I got my, I think mean, this is my Making Memories tool trays. Okay, well, let's look at these. Let's zoom back in. Hang on. I'm not zooming. I'm just lowering the camera. <laughs> what did Whippy say? I'm sorry, guy. I missed what Whippy said. She said something everybody's busting out at. Okay, so let's see what I have in here. So this is one of those old uh, little... We got all kinds. Oh, in here we have all kinds of the um, uh, embossing tools. This is an old one. And I used to, because I go to a lot of crafts, I put a little pink washi tape on all my tools because, you know, you share tools and you leave tools all over the table, especially if you're there for 12 hours. <laughs> so it's nice to mark your territory. So I would mark all mine with a pink washi tape. So pretty much everything's got pink washi tape around it. So you can see right there. Let's see what else is in here. We got the um, the fantastic. <laughs> we got doodle bug um, again. The large embossing. This little scooper. The tweezers. Another set of tweezers. Another bone folder, some popsicle sticks, because you know you had to have those for the rub-ons. You couldn't just do a rub-on. You had to have this stick to do the rub-ons. You had to have this particular stick. <laughs> See? Impress on designer embellishment. You had to have this popsicle stick. I'm telling you. <laughs> An emery board. A tiny, oh, there's a needle, a needle, to, you know, like needle tool, and some other needles in there, and a needle threader, a, one of the little wheels, you know, the little wheels, another uh, pencil sharpener, a ruler, again, with my pink washi tape. Yeah, the eyelet setters, yeah. That was way before any kind of tools like that, right? So that's in there. And then in the bottom little tray, see it has a little tray on the bottom down there, a little tray that's on the very bottom. I would put these metal boxes because they would they would not collapse. The 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 weight of the uh, tote would not collapse on top of these because they're metal, right? Yes, the special stick, the magic web stick. Hi, <laughs> Sherry, CB. <laughs> you gave yours away to Goodwill, Sherry? Are you talking about your magic web sticks? <laughs> I know Sherry's talking about something else, not those popsicle sticks. Um, am I going to be cleaning up? I'm cleaning up as I go. Believe it or not, yeah, you have, everybody has these little making memory tool kits, I know. I don't know what's still in them. We're getting ready to find out, Eileen. I haven't looked in these in some years, i got to say. Probably uh, some couple of years. Have I not looked into these boxes? I have no idea. I hope nothing jumps out at me. 
<laughs> Let's go with the small one first. Okay. Yeah, this would be the, um, with the little, um, the uh, punch tool, the punch tool, which had different, you know, um, different punch holes. See, we got that. We got the embossing thing. We got the little scrape, you know, the little uh, picker upper. What's this? I'm making memories. What is it? A glue stick? Oh my gosh, it's still soft. Oh my gosh, it's still soft. It's still soft and sticky. It did not dry up like the uh, like your gelatos. <laughs> Making memory glue stick. This wheel is not part of this. This is another. It's, just, it's another one of those uh, marking wheels. But this didn't come with this. This was something separate. A couple of different kinds of tweezers. I think one has Making Memories written on it. An X-Acto knife with the extra blades. I'm always, I, I've got 10 of these sitting around the studio. So I don't, you know, obviously need this one. This is the handle, the punch handle. This is just a little, like a makeup wedgie thing. I don't even know if it came with this or not. <laughs> so yeah, so there's that. Let's see what's in this one. Eileen, I know, ha has these. Screw punches. Yeah, Eileen. Okay, this one. All right, so in this one, I just obviously am just using the box because there's other things in here. Okay, so I used to do polymer clay, too, a long time ago, and all my little bits of polymer clay are probably what's left of it. It's in the closet, although I might have some out in the other closet. But I used to do polymer clay way before scrapbooking. Okay, so way before I, you know, started drawing i don't even know at what age i started drawing but i would do a lot of pencil and drawings and you know that kind of thing up through high school and all and uh my first like really professional art stuff i did was calligraphy i'm talking like back in the 80s early 80s so i started doing you know really training myself in calligraphy but i did have a stint of time that i did polymer clay way before scrapbooking and all that of course, I've always drawn and sketched. Now, that's just that's just a given. Um, but anyway, so these are some, like, uh, carving tools, which you can use not just for, you know, they're just good for all kinds of things in, in polymer clay. In polymer clay, hey, Sarah, good, moving in. So these are just a cheap set. I think, I don't even remember, of uh, like you could use in polymer clay. They're like cutting tools, carving tools, but they're good for, um, they're good for using in polymer clay or, you know, I did a lot of uh, rubber, you know, my own rubber stamp carving too, but I just usually use the speedball carver for that. So I got an awl in here, a paintbrush that has no, just the point of a brush, uh, another little like cheap calligraphy pen is in here. I've got a few uh, crochet hooks. I did do a little bit of a uh, hala kala. If y'all don't know what my hala kala is, I, I can chain crochet, double crochet. That's it. No no patterns or anything. So I have a few of those in here. Again, some more needle tools. Another clay kneading tool, um, needle tool, some uh, different t needle type tools for clay. This is a vintage. Oh, let's see. See, why every time I say vintage, why do I think of Eileen? <laughs> oh, yeah. Eileen has the real Japanese screw punch. Have you ever seen this? Look it up on YouTube. Look up Japanese screw punch. That's, those are, you know, that's awesome. Look, Eileen. Uh, it, uh, this is Grandma's old. Uh, thread picker like if you were sewing something you had to pick thread back out like if you made a mistake and you sewed, sewed something look look at this old thread picker pick thread out and it's in a little case I don't know <laughs> I'm picking on Eileen saying she's old or anything okay another uh, clay tool the little scoop tool and a sharp you know knife tool on that end uh, again a little pin pokey Tool. Oh, no, this is the perk. Oh, I forgot about Perkinamo. 
Pergonomos, I said, I, I did a little bit. I bought one kit of Pergonomo where you embossed and colored. Uh, it's real big, I think, in Germany. And I think the originator, the lady that really brought Pergonomo to a craft, it's been years here, um, was from Germany, I think. A seam ripper. Yeah, seam ripper. What did I say? A thread ripper? ripper? Yeah, seam ripper. Thank you, Eileen. See, I knew Eileen would know. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a Pergonama, a Pergonama, Pergonam, Pergamano, Pergamano, M-A-N-O, Pergamano embossing tool. <sighs> this one is two. So I got different. And so what you would do is you would emboss and pierce. So you'd pierce little holes. Let me see, I'll, I'll look around here and see if I can find that kit real quick. But that's from those. They're different needle tools. This one's got a is it, yeah, that's got four needles in it, and I know you won't be able to see it, but there's four needles poking out of that. I'm trying to find a spot where you could see all four, but so you could essentially, and I don't know if it would work on where's my little scrap piece of paper. Let's see if I can poke it, and then you can see the light that shine through it. You do it on parchment. So it's all done like on parchment paper. Bye, Jeannie. But it would poke. I don't know. Really but there's four holes there with one tool. So what you could do is you could poke all the piercing with, and in four, you know, four holes at a time and make a nice little border. I I I've got a book in there and so another wheel, another wheel. I think this might. Have, I don't know what this one came. Some different wood sticks, and of course. The magic rub stick. Another. Um, this is a um, slicer. A uh, what do you call it? Slicer. Polymer clay slicer. So yeah. So that's what's in this thing. And a, and a lucky penny, I guess. I don't know. You know, this will be one of those boxes that you know your grandkids go through after you're gone. Oh, look at Nana's tools. <laughs> Oh, you'll do fine. You'll be fine, Sarah. Just don't overdo it in one day. Okay, so that these little boxes fit in this bottom tray here. They fit in this bottom tray, and that slides in on, on the bottom of this tote, right? So that fits in the bottom of the tote, like that. And then it has a little zip-up compartment. But what was nice about keeping those metal tool things in the bottom of the tote is it gave the whole tote support. Let's zip that back up so it didn't collapse because this tote's got a lot of tools in it. So that's my tool tote. Oh, let me see about the pergam pergamano. Oh. Um, ah, here it is. Got all kinds of stuff up here. My embossing powder tray. Never use that anymore. And uh, my big acrylic block. This was sitting on that on the shelf. I was wondering where that big uh, acrylic block for stamping went that I never use. I don't know. Does anybody stamp that big anymore? I don't know. Anyway, little Pergamano. This thing is old. Old as, not as old as Methuselah. But I think I got it at the same time I got this. Now, Eileen will probably remember these. I just kept them because they're cool and I never use them. This is old tool home week. Of course, Eileen. <laughs> this are uh, water-based Sakura Hobby Craft. They are the, um, I think they were like the original. This was way before Stickles. They're, and I, I, I'm afraid to even see if they even work anymore. But it's like the 3D stuff. Okay, I don't know why it's just sitting in here. Neither do I know why these little jars are sitting in there, in, in the Pergamano box. But, let's just see if there's even... <laughs> it's fun seeing all the weird old stuff, Sarah! <laughs> Sarah, weird old stuff. Okay, so I'm just looking to see if the gel is still moving in there. I don't think it is. I think these are ready to go in the trash. Yeah, I think these are probably ready to go. I'm, I'm guys. I'm talking twenty. I'm saying twenty-five years ago minimum. 
This was probably when I went to a scrapbook convention in Alabama. And I'm talking probably at least 25 years ago. Do you think it's still good? <laughs> I didn't even know these were in here. You still have some of these? It's 3D, 3D Color Crystal Lacquer. And I got it at a stamp convention. I know I did. But let's just see what... Ooh, ooh, no. <laughs> I'm afraid. I'm afraid, y'all. Very afraid. Let me get another piece of paper. <laughs> don't throw this stuff. Denise said, didn't, didn't throw this stuff. Oh, I don't know. Do y'all still have some of these and they're good? Okay, look, it's still coming out. It's still jelly. And now I'm just going to squeeze a little out and I'm going to set this aside and see if it does dry 3D still, right? You know, because it comes out 3D, but I don't know that it's going to dry ever. It may never, ever dry. They are cool when you use them. You should pull yours out. I'll tell you what, Eileen. Eileen, if you pulled yours out and actually would use them, I would send you these. Because you're the only person in the world I know that would use them. <laughs> Bye, Miko. Miko's had enough of this stuff. Yeah, I'm not, not enough of this old stuff. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So it's a set of uh, uh, six colors. Yeah. Let's see if it smells. No, no smell. It's odorless. That's good. It's odorless. So we'll let, we'll set this aside. Hobster came in here. You thought he think what kind of snot crap is that on that paper? <laughs> you know. Luckily, he doesn't come in here very often. <laughs> the only time he usually comes in here is when I have him help me move shelves. <laughs> Don't send him to you, Arlene. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, I didn't, like I said, the, the Pergamono box was sitting up on a top shelf, and this just happened. It's probably because it just, like, fit, you know? It just kind of fit in there. Same for these little bottles, these little containers. I don't know. Is that part of that? Because it looks like you can squeeze some of it in the... Look, they're little, little, uh, two, like, uh, little, um squeeze bottles that, with a little tip. Eileen, what did this go to? Okay, so there's a little bottle. There's a couple of little, look at this little tiny little squeeze tip. This must have been before the fine liner, which I bought some of that too and haven't used. Um, the Mary Altia, Altia, Mary Altia, oh, I can't say it. Let me get it in my head before I try to say it. Alti. oh. Anyway, M-E-R-I, Mary on YouTube, she uses the fine liner and makes lace. I need to send this to Mary. No, she better. No, no, don't send that to me. <laughs> but Mary Altier. 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 Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> so it's got these little bottles, these little jars, and little, like, it's like a little chemistry set thing going on here. I don't know. But they're all in this, and I didn't know, I don't know if this came with uh, this or not. You take the yellow cap off. Huh? There's no yellow cap. I don't know. Did I miss something? Oh, yeah. I took the cap off of this. I squeezed some out. Oh, no. I know there's a lag, Sherry. You're not sure about these either? I don't know, but they could be used for, like, inks or mixing some colors. I mean... I think I'll pull these down into the into the main body of the studio. <laughs> but the uh, let me reach up here. I might bump my camera, but this is the stuff I'm talking about. The fine line stuff. Mary Altier uses white and does lace with the fine line. Okay, so let's go back to the Pergamano. I just pulled my glaze dimensions out. They were, Eileen says hers are from the Stencil Collection Company. Oh, my gosh. You could put your hands right on them, Eileen. See, I didn't even, I completely forgot I had these. Literally 25 years old, if a day, maybe longer. 
but they just happen to be sitting on top of the Pergamano box. Okay, so the Pergamano, let's see if there's even a date on this. It's called Parchment Craft Starter Kit. Again, I probably got this at a, it was a stamp convention because they didn't, it was way before sta uh, scrapbooking. Okay, they used to have rubber stamp conventions, especially they were great for any of us that did old timey mail art. I need to get some books out to show you guys. What time is it? We're already going on noon. Okay, so, but I know these have been around for a while and they might still be around. The Pergamano. And it's a parchment crap. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but what it does is you emboss and pierce. And I believe it's a, a German, from a German company. And um, I think the lady that it invented it, I know it's probably been around forever. And, it, and essentially you take parchment paper and you poke holes and you emboss. And then you use the little color crayon things, which these are, they're called dorso colors. It's, I think what essentially these are is oil pastels. Okay, or oil paint pen type things. Again, I haven't opened this box in a while. It's going to be a surprise when we open them. <laughs> I hope not. And then you uh, and I, I might have one in here or might not. Because I didn't really, it's one of those tedious crafts that you really have to be the kind of person that enjoys these kind of things. I love designing cross-stitch patterns. I did not enjoy cross stitching because while well, I work for a cross stitch company designing patterns. Where is my book? Rabbit trail. Where I put the books? Ah, here's here's two of them. These are the two I always pull out because my name is in the cover. But I love cross stitch designing, but I did not enjoy the process of cross stitching with the threads. Although I had to learn how to do it because I work for a cross stitch company, right? So I had to do it, but I, I mean, know how, but I, I didn't stitch any of these. I designed the patterns like this. Now, remember, guys, these were done before computer. Well, I always say that, and I don't mean computers like the 40s. I mean, like, PCs, desktop. This was all done all by hand. Every one of these little dots, lines, and X's I did with a pin. With the, uh, you know, what are those pins called? The kind that were hacked to clean and refill. Culinar. Uh Anyway, these were all done with hand drawn. Now they, were, they weren't done this small. They were done, these one inch squares are, were two inches. So the, the, the squares that we would work on were this big, not an inch. They were a, 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 a twinchy, not an inchy, okay? And uh, it was clay coated paper, huge sheets, probably 40 something by 30 something, huge sheets of clay coated paper, which clogged your pins even more. But it was glossy, so it would smooth, but as long as your pins didn't clog up, it was awesome. But they were um, two-inch squares, right? So every bit of this is hand done, one X at a time with a pen. None of this is computer, <laughs> okay? So we would um, design these cross-stitch patterns based on our own drawing. So I would do the drawings in the, for these two books, and not all the books. There's a, there was like four, four artists and uh, that we would draw the designs. And then there's other girls that would cross-stitch. They'd hire out cross-stitchers. You know, they would piece out the actual cross-stitching pieces themselves. And what made the this company really, um, and I've gone to the events, you know, they had, um, I, it wasn't a cross-stitch convention. <laughs> it was but yarn and thread, and I don't know what it was called back then. I mean, these are from 1980. This was 87. And 88, okay? These are from 87 and 88. But you'd have needlework. I guess it was needlework uh, conventions. Kind of like you'd have scrapbook conventions or rubber stamp conventions. There was needle craft conventions. Anyway, so what the, this company was most known for was their realistic, the realistic animals. So we would do our sketches very realistically, and then we would have to interpret those ourselves with... with um, symbols right so all these symbols are a different color and a different you know so you'd have to 
every symbol is a different color and it's hard to see. I mean, I, oh, let me see. Let me get my, uh, maybe you could see it if I put a, maybe this one's a little bigger, this little mouse. So you can see, see all those little designs? Those are all hand inked with a pen. None of this is computer generated like they do now. This is all hand inked squares, dots, X's. And every symbol, if you're not familiar with cross stitch, every symbol is a different color. The square is one color, the triangle is another color, the hearts are another color, the dots, the X's, the circles, every one is a different color. And what made them so realistic is how we would blend those symbols into colors. The company is uh, Cross My Heart. Cross my heart. I don't even know if they're still around. I know their books are still around. I still see them occasionally. I don't know if the company's still around. Again, this was 1987 and 1988. Okay. They might still do reprints of these books. But Woodland Wildlife, this was one. And then I'll show you some of the inside. Here's some of the... And if you know cross-stitch, you know how realistic and detailed this cross-stitching is. Because you're changing threads like cray-cray right? <laughs> You're changing threads like crazy. But this endangered species ones is uh, all my own designs. Let me see if I can find it here. Cross-stitch designs adapted from original artwork by Dee Dee Willingham. So all the, all the, now again, not the cross-stitch themselves, right? <laughs> not the threaded part I did not do, but the designs the drawings and the designs for all of the of the patterns are mine. Okay, so I, let me see if you can see some of the. There's an eagle, so you can see some of the. There's a wolf right there, polar bear, puffins, a falcon, and then I think there might be some more in the middle. I don't know. Yeah, here we go. Different versions of them. So yeah, but what my point was is this is tedious. This just doing the doing the cross stitch patterns themselves are tedious, which I didn't mind. I'm done with the pen. Did I enjoy cross stitching? My mom and grandma, awesome cross stitchers. Let me get one of mom's that she's done. I have hanging in my bedroom. Let me see. This is one that mom did. Whoops. And it's framed in glass, so it's probably going to glare, but we'll give it a shot. This was done on the uh, 18 count linen. No, it's not 18, it's 16. 16 count cross stitch. So this is mom's. All those are little X's. See right there? And that's supposed to be, the, that's the smoke of the chimney. It looks like a thread, but it's actually a thread making it like the smoke of the chimney. So this is one of Mom's cross-stitched. Mom and Grandma both cross-stitched forever. Now Mom's color booking with me. <laughs> now Mom's color booking with me. But anyway, what I was saying is, and the reason I bought, brought these books out, was to show you that I don't mind tedious work with a pen. I don't like tedious work with thread. Or <laughs> this kind of tedious work. But I thought I might like this, so that's why I bought this kit. And again, I don't know how well you can see, but that's all embossed on parchment. You want to pick up cross stitch again? I got rid of pretty much, I got tons of cross stitch, being in the industry, you know, we got lots of thread. I mean, I had every single color of thread. Because we had to have every single color of thread. It was like paint, right? It's like if you were, went to work for Americana, you'd have all your colors because you'd have to know how to, you know, you'd have to know all the colors, especially if you were designing with all the colors. Um, so I had, you know, a, I had one of those, um, you know, those toolboxes with the little drawers for screws, nuts, bolts, and screws. It was a big metal, one of those big metal uh, little drawers, right? Little drawers for uh, screws, nuts, bolts. Well, I had it all color-coded with my threads. There was like a hundred little drawers. 
and I would put like two to three colors of the reds, the, you know, because there's like 300 colors. And I have the chart. I still have the charts. I'm like, Hang on, guys. Let me go. Let me see that. find my chart but you know there's a DMC floss chart but I did find some old stuff um old cross stitch stuff where I've done bits and parts because I again you know I had to know how to do it and did some but I didn't enjoy it and didn't do full I did a few full on pieces I remember one time there was uh, one of the stitchers one of the uh, stitchers that you know because we hired them out to stitch right <clears throat> and they were fast. They were fast and good. It had to be because you know you had to have you had to have these completed stitched pieces for the photographer to put on the books, right? So you know you not only had the patterns, but you had the picture of a finished piece. So the stitchers had to be pretty quick because this company put out a lot of books. If you ever know, knew uh, that company back in the eighties. So anyway. Um, the, uh, one of the stitchers got sick one time and I had to do a full on, I mean, twice as much work as you saw in that, the Lord is my shepherd one that mom did full on full piece in a weekend. I literally stitched like 20 hours at a time to finish that piece. I don't think I ever picked up cross stitch again after that, but we had to have it done for Monday's photography shoot. I don't know what made me think to volunteer to do that. Just saying. Sarah's talking about her house. So anyway, I did find some old patterns and some old bits. Like, look, y'all remember when, you know, look, these are bookmarks. Is there anybody out there that still would cross-stitch 18 count? No, this is 22. That's a 22 count right there. <laughs> linen. A 22 count linen. Okay, but I do have a few kits. Now, I'm not sure that all of these... Like this one, these are not even cross my heart. These are other kits. <clears throat> I have some other kits too. A lot of old stuff. I have look at these old towel pattern books. Now these are not from the cross stitch when I was. This is I haven't I, I haven't worked from them for since uh, 1937. <laughs> these are not mine from 1937. But the, but uh, these are good for like uh, seeing patterns, you know, for uh, different things. So it's the designs that I had these for. <laughs> yeah, and um, Joe, Joe does does uh, what is it called, Eileen? Or well, Jean's not here right now. She could tell us the uh, needle tatting, needle tatting, needle tatting. Joe does needle tatting, or she did. I mean, I haven't seen her around for a while, but. Okay, so then there's also, now this is not cross-stitch, but this was another, um, this is uh, more embroidery, but here's some of my stuff that I've never finished. But this is one of my, uh, you can see, this is, I mean, this is old, guys. I'm talking like probably, I guess, 80? I don't know. So I don't know how I got off on this, but we're going for it now. We're going for this rabbit trail. I don't know if this is some kind of pattern thing in here. Dang, it's big. <laughs> the sucker's opening and opening. It's like a dress pattern, for goodness sake. Oh, okay. I know why I have this. <laughs> Eileen? <laughs> yeah, Taddy. Yeah, that was cruel. Yeah, that was... <laughs> That was the name of that needlework, cruel. I'm not trying to be cruel. Uh, uh, oh my gosh, Denise. <laughs> okay, some of you will remember this. My grandma made, we all had these. And some of you might have had these too from your grandma. 
All right. I know I know Jean will recognize these, but she's not here right now. She had an appointment. Eileen, do you recognize these booties? <laughs> knitted booty. What well, are called knitted slippers? Look at this old pattern. Oh my goodness! And I'm not calling out Eileen. I, I mean, I'm not calling her out. But I mean, she's you know we call it, we say that we're um, uh, vintage, not old. <laughs> Eileen, who else remembers these? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whippy's laughing. Who else? Uh. Hey, Grammy. How you doing? You took all your plastic canvas. See, now I never really did the plastic canvas. Although, Ken, Mom's husband, Ken, I've shown y'all, okay, another rabbit trail. I'm leaving literally a tr craft trail through this house. <laughs> so, speaking of canvas... Plastic canvas. I guess if I can get this right here. And speaking of plastic canvas, now mom's husband Ken, he made me this mouse pad with the coffee cups. And I've shown this before, and everybody loves it when I show it. He made he made a whole village for his daughter and grandson. But when he had yeah, you have the pom-poms on them. Yeah, the big pom-poms. Right. Uh, yeah. The two tassels. Yeah, two, like you tie the knots and on the end of the shoelaces, like two big pom-poms. <laughs> no, right, Whippy? So Ken made a whole village, like a western village for his uh, daughter and grandson. But there was one piece I loved, and, I, and he made me one. He made me the outhouse. <laughs> This is all the plastic canvas, and Ken, this is Ken's work. Not only does he make those awesome woodworking bird feeders that I showed y'all before, he also does, he does the uh, plastic canvas. Look at that. Look how perfect that is. But anyway, so it opens up, and I had to add my own special touch. I had to put in my own little roll of toilet paper, because look inside there. Look inside the outhouse. There's the <laughs> toilet seat. Isn't that so cute? Hi, what was I thinking? <laughs> Welcome to my show. <laughs> I know. Look at that. So anyway, it's got the little toilet seat in there. I'm trying to do it so you can still see the light, you know. But, but it's got the little toilet seat <laughs> and so I made my own little roll of toilet paper on a toothpick I used to do miniatures too now no not anywhere near don't let me go on another uh, rabbit trail with the Ketsia house the Ketsia studio she made me oh my gosh the studio Ketsia made me I got probably what time is it we got a few more minutes but anyway, I I did a full-on miniature house that I built from a kit, like three stories, a huge house. But we moved like 30 times. I eventually just had to, I sold it at a yard sale. But anyway, so I made a, just a little roll of toilet paper just to sit right there in the corner because it was just needed that little touch. <laughs> but Ken made this. I just want to show you the plastic canvas, right? So there's the plastic canvas, and then the booties. Okay, see, I didn't know what was in this thing here. Look, at, we're, we're working our way back to the Pergamano. <laughs> so all kinds of old cross-stitch kits in here and things, and the cruel work. Although I still have, um, I wonder if I could find it. Let me see. One second, I'm going to make another trip in here. I 
I tried to find this last time we talked about embroidery, and I couldn't find it, but I just found it uh, a while back. So now I remembered where I put it. This was Denise's, my daughter Denise's, embroidered shirt that I made for her. I didn't make the shirt, I did the embroidery. In 1970, let's see, she would have been two, 1974. I embroidered this in 1974. <laughs> And this is really the only thing that I, I've kept of hers, clothing-wise. I just, you know, we moved a lot. and But I still have this little embroidered shirt. And I have photographs with her wearing this shirt. But this is some little embroidery I did for her in 1974 or 5. Probably 1975. 1975. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. Okay. There's that rabbit trail. So, back to this rabbit trail. I don't want to file my books away in the... Let me put this back over here. All right. Yeah, now I do have a, a mess. I was picking up after myself as we went, but now it's piled up. So, let's see what else did I have in here to look at as far as patterns and stuff. I got this bag of... Yeah, here's, um, this one was done on, now I did finish this, this one was done on, I think it's 24, I, I forget the exact measurements, but I think it's 24, it's 24 squares per inch linen, so this is some of my work that I did when I was working for the company. So you can see how tiny that is, there's my thumbnail. Uh, no, Boo didn't wear that. My daughter did, Denise. My daughter, Denise, D-A-N-I-S-E, Denise. Boo's mama. That's Boo's mama's shirt. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. But that's linen. So you can see what how, how thin linen is. But yeah, so I still have some stuff that I did, but not much. I just did not enjoy it. You used to make those, Janet? The oh, embroidered. You have your embroidered jeans from high school. I don't have mine. I did embroider my jeans too, uh, but I don't have them, uh, Janet. I don't have any of that. We moved so much, you know, growing up in the military, marrying in the military. I've moved over thirty times. I don't have a. I you know, we we uh, downsize real quick when you got to move that many times. Where's Sarah? Oh, <laughs> you downsize real quick. I'm just looking at what else I might have in here as far as, you know, the starters and things that I've, patterns that I've begun. Oh, now this one, I love this, but this one wasn't, okay. Here's one that I never finished, and it, this was not one of our patterns. This was somebody else's pattern, so I don't even, can't tell you what company made of it. And they would sell patterns with an actual photograph, right? <laughs> I love this, and I thought, I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish that. Now, remember, this is probably 1980. No, 1982, maybe. Look. Love this pattern. Look at that girl. I can't tell you who made it or anything like that. It was probably a leisure art kit, and I started it. Again, I love the look of the, having it on the small linen, but this is as far, let me see which way does it even go. It goes this way. This is as far as I got. Look how, I can't, I wish you could see how tiny those stitches are. Can you even see how small those stitches are? <laughs> is it even possible to see how small they are? This is as far as I got. Right there. <laughs> uh. Anyway, okay, so there's a little bit of reminiscing with uh, some cross-stitching. Again, I do have some few old kits. Some are from Germany. I mean, actual, like, real German cross-stitch kits. Grandma had a lot of friends. And then my grandfather was Dutch, uh, my step-grandfather. She had a lot of friends that would, you know... She, she would get old cross stitch and needlework kits from. So I inherited some of them. So anyway, all right, so back to the Pergamano. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, guys, 
so this is this again is a very tedious craft right so it comes with in the in the starter kit it came with a set of the dorso colors parchment craft and again they're they're like oil pastels right and they're in like a little foam case they're like a oil pastel is the best way I can describe them but they're used kind of like just to like like how you'd rub your finger over something that's embossed right they're just like a tint they're just to tint your uh, parchment and I guess I was thinking about making some inches with it. I don't know or this is just scraps of the parchment paper I don't think there's there may be something in here that I've made but I can't say that there's anything left in there but it, you give us this is oh look it's starting to fade around the edges I mean this was the thicker there's the thicker parchment and there's the thinner parchment now of course I did calligraphy on parchment but this is totally you know not calligraphy at all in this in this craft this is all embossing so what you would do now see I put all my tools away but you would take your paper okay and you could punch the holes with that tool I showed you earlier and you could do and it shows up really white let me see do I have a needle tool or so oh, let me just get a pokey tool here just or, or even a, a just anything just to poke it so you can see what I'm talking about uh, now again I'm not doing this neat and this is not a needle you need to do it with the needle tool but I just wanted to show you kind of like portfolio uh, portfolio water soluble the what the portfolio pastels exactly whippy it's kind of like that but I have not done any kind of a comparison or anything but what you would do is you take your needle tool and as you're poking in the needle tool now again this is making it choppy but I just want you to see how it shows up but it would white it would white out and poke real pretty patterns and what see how I made it white when I poke it and then you can also do the embossing I don't, this is not an embossing tool, but I'll just kind of I'm going to try to do it without poking a hole in it. And you can emboss the patterns. Ugh, the scrapey noise is bugging me. Okay, but anyway, you could see how the parchment would turn white. Well, that's what you would do. And not only that, but you do the cards lacy edges and see all that's embossed. That's all embossed and, and needle poked very intricate and it's called Pergamon you can look it up online I'm sure there's a YouTube video on it I just haven't ever looked it up because I'm not planning on doing this right but I've got all bits of it left and let's see if there's any oh there is something in here I've done now mind you this was probably my very first and last attempt at doing this right and it's all kind of folded up let's see was this maybe it was kind of an envelope maybe it was supposed to be an envelope like this so you can see all this is embossed with the embossing the little embossing ball tool and any place you see a hole it was done with the needle tool so that's all embossed the edges are all cut and embossed do I have any and then there's this heart here so that's all done with the embossing tool, right? <clears throat> I don't know if there's any place in here where I did hole punching. Here's another envelope. This is, again, just embossed. <laughs> what, what was uh, Colleen saying? I need that envelope for your vintage junk journal. <laughs> So just different pieces of parchment in here, some designs. Oh, here's another one. You know, just to, you can see you cut the edges. Well, you don't actually cut it. Well, I guess you can, but the idea is to poke it with the needle tool and then tear it off so it looks like lace. So anyway, that's all. I don't know what else is in here? I was hoping to see some good patterns in here. So yeah, here we go. Here's the book. This is what you need to see. So yeah, I got the book and some more patterns in here. See, you got the patterns like this. See? And you could buy extra patterns and things. Here's showing you how to do the pokey tool, the needle tool, how to poke off the after you've poked it with the needle tool. 
So, all right, so here we go. Look at that fan. So all this is Pergamano, which I, you saw, this is probably, everything in this, in here is all I ever did. <laughs> it just wasn't me, but you don't know. Sometimes you try things and you just don't know. Oh, I'll, I'll love that. Uh-uh, not me. Oh, and then again, I don't, <laughs> don't ask. Well, if you weren't here five minutes ago. So anyway, guys, that is kind of a little bit, <laughs> that was a big rabbit trail day. Yeah, learning something new. Yeah, it's not, it wasn't a craft for me either, but neither was cross stitch. I love designing the patterns. And I would even draw the dots and dashes for the patterns, but don't give me a needle to, uh, don't give me thread. And I've never liked to sew either. A sewing machine sew, never liked to sew. <laughs> no, it's tedious for sure. But same thing for the uh, cross stitch on those tiny, you know, 22, 24 count linen. Yeah, with like one thread. You know, you get six, there's six threads on a piece of uh, embroidery floss. You know, like, let me see. I'll still sew with it. Um, like, instead of sew, in, in, I, I rare, very rarely, and I just have a couple in my little sewing kit here. If I have to sew something like a button, if I have to sew on a button or fix a hem, I rarely use this. I still go for this. I still sew with this, not this. So anytime I sew anything, like a button or a hem, I go to my embroidery floss, not thread. <clears throat> but anyway, what I wanted to show you was... When you pull out a, a piece of a skein off the skein, where's my scissors? <clears throat> There's six threads in there. And of course, now my eyes now, you know. But anyway, there's six threads in there. And you can, if you pull one and hold the rest like this, you kind of grip it. You grip the edge and you can just get a hold of one. You can pull out one thread. And that smooths, you know, you can pull them out one by one. This is how thin, you, if you were cross-stitching with that tiny, tiny bit that I showed you. Look how thin. One thread. If you're going to if you're gonna cross-stitch 24 count, sometimes two, depending on how, you know, if you're doing a sampler or, but anyway, yeah. So that's how you de-thread a skein. You just pull, get a hold of one. Again, I'm trying to get my glasses. You just get a hold of one and hold all the others with your thumb like that. Kind of lightly hold them all and you can pull one out. And then you just smooth out your skein again. So if you wanted to uh, do something with two threads, then you'd put those two back together and thread your needle with two. But that's how you work with the, your embroidery floss. You don't try to, you know, don't try to, it's best to separate one by one. Don't get impatient. Try to untwirl three out of there. You know. <laughs> yeah. You want to you wanna pull one by one, even if you're going to use three threads. Don't try to, like, jerk them apart like this. You might be lucky and go real slow and get them apart. But the best way to do it is to grab one at a time. So you don't get it in a knot. Don't get your panties in a wad. Or your thread in a knot. <laughs> So just grab one and pull it out like that. And then if you want to use three threads, then you put those three threads back together. <laughs> Otherwise, this is what will happen. When I try to get those three apart like that, now I can probably smooth that out and get them out. But, yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. So, well, anyway, guys, I hope you all had fun just hanging out a little bit on Friday. Don't forget Barb. I think it's planning still on uh, Ustream. I mean, uh, YouTube being hers today. Yeah, now I have crochet, thread crochet, and, okay, one more rabbit trail before we go. The only crocheting I've really done, and I and I tried to find them last time. Let me see.
to be one. Hang on, guys. Let me run down to it. I couldn't find them last time we talked about my holla collars. And look, here's a face right here that I can show you on. I chain stitch and double crochet and that's it. But what I would do is I make these things called holla collars. All they are is just double crochet and this one has some of the eyelash thread woven in, you know, crocheted in. But all they are is just long, like one to two inch wide crochet Sometimes I put tassels, sometimes not. i got to catch my breath because I just ran up downstairs. And what you do is you wrap them around your neck like three times, or two, in this case two, like this, and you just kind of loop it through around your neck. Basically, essentially, it's a collar, right? I'm trying to put it on. It's a collar. It's like a, like a collar, just a warm like scarfy collar, and I call them holla collars. <laughs> and that's all it is. And this is my extent of my crocheting right there. Holla collars. Here's the, another one I made. This one has, now this one everybody thought looked like spider legs. This yarn here. So all it is is just plain old double crochet, and then I crocheted along the edge to put the blue. But look at the. <laughs> Look what the thread of the yarn looks like. They look like spider legs. So I have a little bit of hanging down there. But again, all you do is you wrap it around. So soft though. So soft. You just wrap it around your neck two or three times, depending on how big your neck is. <laughs> and it's just a little collar. But it keeps your neck warm. I made it up, Colleen. I don't know. I just invented it. And I called them hollow collars. But I'm sure just double crocheting a long thing and wrapping it around your neck is not inventive. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's my, uh, that's what, this is the extent of me crocheting. Holla collars. <laughs> Last time we talked, I couldn't find them. All right, guys, so now I got to go. I got to eat. But I hope y'all enjoyed that. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed like a little reminiscing about some supplies. And um, what cro size crochet? Probably, what is it? Uh, one of those ones that was in that 10. What is that? A, an 8, Eileen? A pretty good size. Not too tiny, but it's not one of those big ones either. It's not one of those big plastic ones, Eileen. It's, you know, one that's probably... I'll draw it for you because I can't... There's a piece of paper. It's probably about this big. Like that? What is that? An A to ten? How do you spell holocala? It's this. Holocala. <laughs> but it's not like holler collar, you know, but holocala. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so that's a, a I don't know what size. A G oh, what was I think an eight or nine? A G, yeah, Brenda, a G. See how often I crochet? <laughs> yeah, it's probably a G, and it's probably a little G. A G. <laughs> yeah, it's, I crochet them loose. Most of the time I crochet it real loose because I want them fluffy and soft, you know, not tight-knit like, you know, heavy crochet. Yeah, they're, they're very loose. I mean, look, I can pull, see how loose that is? Very loose. I mean, I'm just going like real, it's real loose. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I don't either. I don't either. Thanks for the funny rabbit trail down memory lane of vintage craft stuffs. That's good. I like that. Vintage craft stuffs. I'll, I'll put that in the title. I'll put um, pencils, pens, and vintage craft stuffs. That's what I'll put. I'll title it, uh, Julie. All right, guys. Well, thanks. It's fun. Y'all have a good weekend. I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping to go to uh, see the Jean Michel Basqua. Don't email me. Exhibit tomorrow if Cam can go. 
uh, I've kind of been hoping to, you know, make it time for him to go, but it depends on if he's working with his dad. If he works with his dad on the weekends, and he can't go. So, Lucy Goosey Holakala. Yes. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a great weekend, and I'll see y'all on Twitter. Bye. You know, they're just not going to blend like the other Prismacolor premieres. Now they're called premieres. But they're good for tiny areas where you're not going to do any blending anyway. Because, it, like, if you're doing a tiny little word or something, where you, you're probably not going to do any blending, you just want to color it in. Varathins are good for that. So that sits here next to some of my other trial pencils. I have a couple of Pablos in here, and, a, you know, just a couple other, you know, extra whites and blacks in there. So that just sits in this part of the tray. These are the colors that I've been using. Like, that I go to for pretty much every portrait. Now, again, I'm not going to use the blue for a person with green eyes. Or I'm not going to use the reds if the person has a green shirt on. I'm not going to use every color in every portrait. I don't mean that. But these are my most go-to colors. And they're really kind of out of order. These are my mostly my skin tones. Other than the purple there. Although I do use a purple in lipstick. Anyway, so these are kind of like my pencils that I'm using like at the moment <laughs> okay let's see do, 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 grilled cheese oh yeah <laughs> talking about the grilled cheese bibliophiles on unite right after this chapter <laughs> yeah um you know I don't I never mind showing art books you know and I have different kinds of books by category now only my art books and even most of my all my craft books and scrapbooking books, I, I filled up a complete shelf in, or, you know, a bookcase in here. So I took all those down to my library downstairs. So really up here, all I keep up in here in the studio are my art books. Craft books, I had to move out of here. And all my magazines, art and craft magazines, I had to move out of here because there was just no more room. Because I just have two full-on bookshelves for the just the art books. All the other shelves in here are my journals and my own, you know, my own art portfolios and stuff. But I have art books broke out by different categories. I'm going to have mixed media shelf. I have color book, more than one shelf now. I have two shelves of calligraphy books, two shelves of just general art books, another shelf of uh, other artists' sketchbooks that, you know, sketchbooks, printed sketchbooks, you know, not their actual sketchbooks. I mean, like, they, they have sold books of their sketchbooks. Danny Gregory, that kind of thing. So I have the shelves of those. Let me know what else. Um, uh, two shelves of clip art. So, you know, I, I have tons of books if y'all ever want to talk books. If y'all have an artist. Hey, Heather. Okay, so, um, yeah, my CC's Pizza closed down. I love when CC's Pizza because they're so, you know, just go in there and just grab all kinds of slices of whatever. But my CC's closed down. The closest one, anyway. Not all. I don't know. I, the closest one to me. So this is what I use for my just I, I know I'll use these every day but that that's not all I use every day so I have this tray let me show you what's in this tray this tray let me take off this and I'll show you what's in this too this tray is all my Prisma colors and bundles and I keep I try to keep this kind of this it's, it's one of those breakfast trays right so all my Prisma colors are right here bundled up this is and miss martha asked how i store my pencils and you know some of y'all have seen some of this julie topaz has seen probably she's probably seen my bathroom so julie topaz has been around since day one uh her vicky there's a couple of girls that have been around for you know close to six years five and a half plus but again i've only been up all right, there we go. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Art in the Morning. I'm Dee Dee, and this was an impromptu morning, Friday morning show. I was doing some uh, camera testing and stuff with Carrie, and people got notification that I was streaming, so now we're going to stream. So we'll do that for a while. But I, I was answering some questions, so let me backtrack a few. One person, Terry, asked me about how I glued magazines together to make a magazine journal. Because, you know, I put two or three magazines together. 
and if y'all haven't seen the magazine journal shows I have a couple of recordings of those but all I do is I'll take and I'm just going to use this calendar I'm not going to actually glue I'm just going to show you what I do I use my Eileen's tacky and on the back the back of the magazine which is usually a card stock you know for the ones I use I'll completely cover it with Eileen's tacky and I smear it out I don't leave any lumpy bumpies and then I do it on the I do the same thing on the part that's going to get glued to it so in other words like if I'm gluing this to this I completely cover it with Eileen's tacky both pages smear it out and then glue them together and that holds that holds it so that's what I do for gluing the magazine journal pages together hello from Finland Um, I have I've done a whole bunch of uh, flip through my color books and a whole all my color books I've shown those. there's already videos on those and I just did color book update I think it was either Monday or Wednesday showing all the ones that I'm in process doing the ones that I have partial pages done I'm still waiting for Angie Bell to answer me because I don't know which color book she was asking about. Oh, one of them was the... Oh, okay, yeah, the ones that you sent me, all those, Angie, I gave them all away. They were all given away. So Angie was asking me about some of the color books that she had sent me. Yeah, I gave all those away. Um, let's see. Oh, and Miss Martha was asking my pencil storage. All right, so let me, I will talk about that. We like talking about pencil storage, don't we? <laughs> okay. Yes, I did. I gave them all away, Angie. Y'all send me, if I have, if y'all send me stuff and it's like, you know, I have a lot of it, it gets sent away. I share. I, I do share. All right. Yes, I know. Well, actually, the old ones are the better ones, Miss Martha. If you have barrel Prisma colors, yay you! <laughs> when they, what, yeah, when, what do you do when you get annoyed? Are you asking Miss Martha? Miss Martha goes, my Prisma pencils are old, and I get annoyed when they break. What do you do in that instance? So when I get annoyed, Martha, I usually stop and get me a cup. Of <laughs> okay, so there are people. Different ones have talked about putting them in a low temp in your oven and heating up the core. Some have even tried to said microwaves. Although Dana said hers caught on fire, so yeah, I would not recommend putting your pencils in the microwave. <laughs> Maybe a low, like you know, two hundred or one hundred and fifty or something in your. I'm not recommending any of that because I've not tried any of that. I've not tried to heat up any of my Prisma colors. What I usually do is I just suck it up and sharpen them again. <laughs> ah, Miss Martha. Ah, ah. Um, the tacky glue is thicker, Crocker too. My when I matte medium. Let me show you the difference. Good question. All right, let me get a little bit of test here okay I use golden matte medium I just put it in a uh, dishwasher bottle to use but it's it's but whoever it was had to be awful dang tiny so anyway what I was gonna say though is Miss Martha does beautiful paintings of Frida if you ever want a Frida painting seek out seeking for art Martha just saying okay I had to give her sorry Miss Martha if I embarrassed you she's probably left now <laughs> But that hangs up on my inspiration wall next to my barb house and other things too. Okay, so Miss Martha was asking about my pencil storage. All right, so let me put this marker cap back on. So let me show you the different things that I have for different uses. I've been doing a tons of uh, commission portraits with color pencil. So my color pencils are in trays right now, but I'll show you how I store them when I'm not doing a ton of, pen, of uh, pencil work. Um, hi, Mel Gross. Visit my sister in Georgia this summer, and I would love to visit you, Dee. Um, I'll get with you. Have to email me, and you'll have to tell me, you know, where you're going, what days, and all that. I have to schedule things because here's the thing: I have to plan when I'm going to make those grilled cheeses. <laughs> Somebody in chat was saying that they were going to visit, come by and visit. 
uh, my studio, and and I do. I have people visit quite you know quite often, not not like every day or anything. But the the only qualification you have to know that's all you get fed. You get fed grilled cheeses. If you want anything else, you got to bring your own food. Ask JJ. No, JJ brings her own food. <laughs> Uh, her movies on Netflix. Selma Hayek. Yeah, that's who it was. Thanks, Miko. I couldn't remember. Okay, so how I store my pencils. I have two trays that I keep right next to me. This one just has like some a few, and I know you're going to hear a lot of crinkling, crunchly, moving pencils. So if that bothers you, mute or whatever. <laughs> yes, I have to plan ahead for my grilled cheese. <laughs> Oh, but I gotta say, Lynn, I saw a, uh, I forgot who it was, I think it was Chronicle Books. I retweeted it yesterday or the day before. They were posting, I don't know if it was a, They were, I love, any Chronicle book is an awesome book. If you see something with the Chronicle, little Isle Galas logos on it, Chronicle book public, published, uh, there, you're going to get an awesome book. Just trust me. Maybe we need to talk about books, Jeannie. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> they posted a picture of a grilled cheese made with macaroni and cheese. So I'm going to change my uh, studio visitors lunch menu to macaroni and cheese sandwiches. Yeah, baby. <laughs> okay, so I have, um, uh, what do you call it, um, Bonnie. Vaughn, Vonnie Vaughn, and I did a swap. She sent me all of her, uh, all of her uh, Verathins, her old Verathins. These are for the Sanford ones. They're not as old as Beryl, of course. I don't even know if Beryl made Verathins, but Sanford, these are the old ones with the gold tips. She traded me all these for all my uh, uh, oil pastels, because she uses oil pastels. I'm not using my oil pastels. I, I'll use the Verathins. She wasn't using Verathins. So we did a swap. So she sent me her uh, Verathins. These are the old ones, like I said, which these are awesome. And, and Paula, journal artista, made a point of this on her show the other night, that these are good for tiny, because they're, they're hard. Verathins, uh, Prismacolor Verathins are harder lead. They're not going to blend, and they're not going to golden matte medium. Here's my Eileen's Tacky Glue, which I love that they come now in these little... Uh, Although I still get a buildup there because I'm not careful. But, uh, yeah, it's got the little tip that you can put your the tip in. It stands up. Because before that, I put them in the jars. But I'd always keep my, I'd always keep them face down. All right, so you've had to let color come loose from the pencil. Yeah, I know. There are problems with Prismacolor. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me, I know that. Yes, we love it. Oh, and, and Barb, if you want to put in for uh, Tar you ta I, I can't even pronounce the Finnish girl's name. I'm going to have to rename her. Jana. Yeah, we'll have to name it because we're like, in the sense of Jana. <laughs> or Jana from Finland. I don't know. I can't do a Finnish accent. Anyway, but Barb, if you want to put your link in there for her to watch you at two, feel free. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Eileen. Oh, so, yeah. Okay, so let me, um, so th the tacky glue where Crocker 2 was asking, I'm going to squeeze out some a blob of tacky glue. I'm going to show you the difference. Okay, now you can get gel. Matte gel is thick, right? But the matte medium, let me just show you the difference here. All right. Finger test. <laughs> and then Miss Martha, I'm going to do the pencil thing. All right, so the reason you want to use the tacky glue or some kind of, even probably Elmer's School glue, if you, as long as you smooth it out and put a coat on both sides. Coat this and coat this, smooth it out so you don't have lumpy bumpies, and then glue both sides together. I always put glue on both sides of everything, whether I'm using matte medium to glue collage bits or tacky glue to use like gluing magazines together. Tara. Okay, Tara. Let me write that down. Tara from Finland. Good to have you. Thanks for being here. Okay, so look at the tacky glue. Let me kind of tilt it a little bit. All right, look, let's do the finger test. 
Look at that. See how thick that is? It's very thick and sticky. Very thick. Very thick. It's tacky, tacky, tacky. <laughs> that's why it's called Lowings. So that's the tacky glue. See how thick it is? Okay. Now the matte medium is almost like liquid. It's like it's like um like hand lotion. It's like hand lotion consistency. See how thin that is and smooth? Loving me some matte medium. <laughs> but the tacky glue is real thick and sticky. So this is just thicker and better to use for the magazine uh, journals, like gluing covers together or anything like that. All right, now let me get a baby wipe and clean my fingers off, and then I'll show some pencil storage. We love talking about pencil storage. <laughs> Miss Martha. All right. And some of y'all probably seen it, you know, how I store pencils and stuff before, but I'm going to, I'll show you. I have different things for different pencils. All right. So, and of course, if I go somewhere, I'll use different things to carry depending on how long I'm going to be gone. If I'm going to go somewhere for a week, which is like maybe once every, literally a blue moon, <laughs> I, you know, if I go on a vacation or something, even well, let's put it this way. If I was going on vacation, I'd take a, a travel kit. If I was going to Denise's like for a week or two, which that just doesn't really ever happen anymore. It used to happen more when the kids were smaller. But then I would take my big tote of pencils. So it depends on where I'm going, what I'm doing as far as carrying anything with me. So if y'all are watching the recording, someone asked me, Miss Martha asked me about let's 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 just give Miss Martha a short shout out real quick. She doesn't get here very often. So Martha is seeking for Art Martha. And this, I have one of her lovely pieces of art that I'm getting ready to show off. I mean, I have some of her cards. Now, all her, if, if y'all remember, like before Christmas, she sent us some prints and, and some real nice framed matted, not framed, but matted prints. And I gave all those away. So I don't have any of Miss Martha's art left because I gave it all away. However, this is mine. I will never give this one away. This is one Miss Martha's Frida Spoons. And I know it's probably, I'm going to have to kind of do a little, little lovey on it here. So it's a silver spoon painted. She wire wraps, beaded, she beads it, she puts metal bits. There's a little scully right there. Oh, that's a skelly, not a scully. The whole that's got the full skeleton. It's got a little skelly there. It's got a beaded hanger, different pieces of metallic, like probably alcohol, you know, paint. I mean, alcohol inks that will stick to metal. This is all wire wrapped beads, but the the gem of it is the painting. She paints the most awesome Fridas ever. Miss Martha can whip out some Fridas, I'll tell ya. <laughs> and so she's got a metal bit glued to the, let me, oops, sorry guys, let me get her untangled here. She has a metal bit attached to the back of the spoon. Sorry guys, I bumped it with the spoon. I know, I love this spoon too. It hangs on my wall next to my barb house. I have a barb house I showed the other day. And uh, so she put a little jeweled heart here, but this is all this is all Miss Martha's painting, and she paints these not just on spoons, but I mean she paints them on, you know, canvases and and other things too. Hang on, guys, I froze with incoming mail. One second, there we go. So Miss Martha is an awesome artist. So there you can see that, and then she has all kinds of beads and charms. She has a little dove hanging off of it. So you can see it's got all kinds of things hanging off of it. And I especially love it. I got to go to the Frida exhibit at the High Museum here in Atlanta a few years ago. And I'm hoping if we can coordinate it, we wanted to go last weekend to the High Museum to see Jean Michel Basqua. <laughs> and I know, guys, I'm pronouncing it totally wrong. But anyway, he's got an exhibit of his art journals and things at the museum through May. So I'm hoping if we can coordinate it with Denise, I want to take Cam uh, to the museum. 
And so I'm kind of, I put it off a week and I might put it off another week if he can't go tomorrow. But I'd like for us to coordinate so that we can get him down there. Uh, with his friend that I, I would want to go with him, who's an art, a girl artist friend of his, is out of town. So otherwise I'd want to take her too. So I don't know, but I do want to get to the museum. So what I was going to say though is I have seen her work in person. She even had one of her body casts there. This woman was probably, and I don't remember exactly how tall or how tall she was, probably four foot eight or something. She was tiny. She and her waist was like this big. Her body cast was like that big around. She was the tiniest little thing. It was just, I mean, you just wouldn't think, you know. Now I haven't seen the movie. I've seen, you know, pictures of her, of course, and different things, but I haven't seen the movie version of her life. I don't remember who portrayed her or anything, 